No, I'm saying, did you apply for yes, unemployment? Yes, I did. Just to prove that I was fucking unemployed, <laughs> I went and said, can I get a loan, please? They said, who's your boss? I said, I don't fucking have one. They said, get the fuck out of here, street rat. <laughs> I don't think that happened. They did. tell the difference it feels like it i'm gonna keep wearing the mask in the grocery store that's just it's not a thing that i'm afraid of being sick it's because i have truly enjoyed being anonymous in the grocery store that is kind of cool mm-hmm. it i don't know i never i try not to get so pissed off about it where it's like oh they're gonna make me wear a mask can't tell me what to do i wasn't mad about that ever like what i was always mad about was them telling me i had to fucking turn it shut my fucking business down. That was oh, what yeah. made me mad. I'm like, I'll wear a fucking mask. Let me keep it open. Mm-hmm. And then it got far enough to where it was like, yeah, I don't give a shit. I'm not going to wear a mask and I'm going to stay open. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever get the fine? Do you ever get fined? Nope. No fines. Yeah. No fines. Got a, got a second uh, mm-hmm. accusation leveled against us, but it's still pending yeah. here from them on that one. So it was- I don't know. I was that still was also like the day before we went into the red tier, which oh, right. allowed us to have oh, people wow. inside. So I think they were just kind of like, well, you know, <laughs> they were a little behind. Yeah, and what, maybe it, they're still behind. Maybe they that's probably, why I haven't heard nothing yet. They, they probably are. And yeah. there's no more colors anymore. We're all done. We're moving on. Well, it did magically end it on one fucking day. <laughs> it was the day. Yeah. June like, 15th. You know what's amazing? There was a start point and a fucking end point to it. <laughs> <laughs> March 17th. To June 15th. That's literally the fucking timeline. That is the dumbest shit. And you know what? If this had happened sooner, if it had, they had set the date a little bit closer to when I was a little more fired up about things. Because at this <laughs> point, it's just become like, whatever. It's just, you're, you know, you're today's, be- today's Tuesday. Well, you're becoming the guy that's just like, a, okay, we got it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Are you still talking. All right. You're still mad. Yeah. Well, exactly. Right. So it's like. <laughs> But if they were just a little bit closer, I was doing this whole thing where I was like calling it prohibition, you know, at the bar because the oh, bar yeah. was shut down. So like I took a picture of the bar being empty, you know, and I put March 17th, 2020 I, prohibition. And I was had these I, I loved old, it. I love the shirts. Yeah. So like the repeal shirts, which the ABC agent purchased one, which I thought. Shut, shut up. So I thought is this was true? cool. Yes, absolutely. He walked up there and he bought one. And then hey, they met, this is a big deal. That guy is like. No, it's not. Low key saying. I'm, I'm on your side. I guess I should have. <laughs> He's I should, probably wearing it. We should run with that because that's initially what I was bragging to like Quinn and Bell about was like ABC agent bought a t-shirt from me. Uh, that's not turns the way out, out he used it for evidence. <laughs> 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 this guy's married to the job. <laughs> Honestly, you know what? There's two things that there's two things. Not here. really. One, He's actually pretty cool about it. <laughs> well, but the one thing is like that is disappointing. I can understand. Like I, know. I, I would feel played. And the I worst part you. is, is I went and told everybody. I I sold, bet I sold a shirt I to an ABC agent. You know, and then <laughs> got the government on my side. However, at, this should show you that like not all people who work in government are just like automatons who just like right. do what they're told. Like right. this guy is working the job to a T collecting evidence as he goes along like that's what we want that's isn't that what we want out of our uh, that was your tax dollars that just bought a fucking shirt from my bar looks sounds like it's stimulating the economy <laughs> to me yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> okay back i tried to look at it as a positive side yeah i tried and then they mm. just kept sticking their foot further up my ass so yeah it's hard to stay positive when they're your playing your breath you smells like, like shoe puppy. leather yeah, exactly like a dirty tongue so Editor. Editor. Of the Sun Gazette. Yep. Host of the Paper Trail podcast. Yeah. Host of the Paper Bag podcast. Yeah. Paul Myers, welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sm- thank you for the smattering of applause. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we didn't mean it. You don't have like a sound drop over there with like applause? I have. We might. Oh, no. That feels low. We, we don't need to listen to him. Yeah, you just turned me down now. Now you're messing with my headphones. <laughs> oh, I am. Nope, nope, nope. No, we're good. Mm. We're good. <laughs> as, as editor, how much editing goes into this? A uh, little. Very little. Little. It's really more on the, the front and the back. Well, so it's like matching up audio with video one. Right, yeah. Chopping up the fronts and the backs. See, I don't do video. Is it difficult to like match up the... No, not, no. It takes just a, a keen eye and ear. <laughs> 
in a quiet house uh-huh. to try to yeah. do it, but it's not terrible. Um, the The program he uses is getting easier the more I use it, which is actually kind of cool. And yeah, then, and I'm discovering new things on it. So, but it it takes a little bit of time. There's a reason why you know we'll do these, and then it's like a week later before I got it. Ready. Oh, 100 percent. Because I'm like I also like to procrastinate. Oh, I don't yeah. like to, but I do it a but lot. You do. I'm like. Walk by the computer. I need to get to that. Mm, okay, we'll get to that later. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Do that for a few days and then that was, sit down. That was paper bag podcast for a long time. Yeah. And then the then the pandemic happened, and then I was like, I don't have time for any of this. No. Because we didn't, unlike you, obviously, we uh, we didn't get shut down. In fact, right. we had one of the best years we've ever had. <laughs> Turns out <laughs> we kind of did too. Uh, yeah, I bet. Well, I mean, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't as bad, I guess you should say. I could say, but um, yeah, it was. I it was it was definitely scary in the beginning of it. Wondering, well, not even in the beginning it wasn't scary as far as the business goes. In the beginning, it was kind of like worrisome, like okay, what the hell is going on? Of course, you know, and and that was our thought too. Yeah, and we were all for it. I mean, as far look, we're not exactly all for like hey, having to shut down. Obviously, this is. The, the business is more of an investment at this point of mine and Janie's. We're not relying on it. However, our staff is, and that's important to us, you know? So we did what we could to help in that aspect. And also just to kind of like, hey, all right, let's take a step back and see what happens with this. And, well, we talked about this on, on, on your podcast on the paper bag, you know? So, I mean, it was like a different approach to it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, having to, the great part was having to take that step back and kind of put things in perspective. And it, <clears throat> we were using last year as our gauge for like, okay, this is the year we're going to hit everything hard, hit all of our events. We're going to see like our make it or break a year. We're oh, 2020 know, was going to be that? Yeah. Like yeah. the beginning of the year we were saying it. We were like, look, at this is, we're going to set the bar with this year of like what it's going to be like. It's best laid plans. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, oh. I don't know. They keep handing out PPPs, loans and forgiving them maybe. But you know what? Ours got good? forgiven. We did it. We did it um, on the first go. I didn't, I didn't even bother on the second. And uh, I mean, and it worked, you know. But I mean, the makeup for fucking unemployment insurance that, yeah. you know, I mean, we oh, told that was we told the, for months. It, it's a mess. Complete fucking mess. Yes. Yeah. You know, oh, the, the amount of fraud. I, everybody knew there was going to be fraud. Like, here's the thing about government. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> government is about like it traffics in efficiency. Like there are pl- and it's a balance at that because. You can either be like really efficient and have no rules, right? Or you can be like, or you can be effective and but have a lot of rules but not be very efficient. So like at the beginning of the pandemic, Fed, state, everybody was just like, throw money into the economy, just just do it, print it, yeah, but just just keep printing those things twenty four seven, and that's a way to go, right? But everybody <laughs> said option. it's an option. Anything's an option, but Everybody knew that once so that Abraham once you Lincoln started said. doing that, you're just like, okay, you're inviting fraud into the system. Yeah, mm-hmm. and anything involving it, it, government. You, yeah, and so he, so here we are, and like we had ten ten point whatever billion dollars of EDD fraud. Right, and er, and then everybody in California is like, okay, that's a lot of fraud. <laughs> like yeah. I didn't know it was going to be that much fraud. But Even worse though is that California doesn't have a good track record with stopping fraud. Ever that ever our governor is a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we've, we've never. That's who's gonna win re-election. He's gonna, uh, no, he's gonna I, win the recall for I, sure. I guarantee it. I believe he would. Mm-hmm. I'm actually gonna vote for him. What? I am, Why? and I'm actually gonna vote for him as president in, in 2024. In tw- oh, are you? Despite all those assholes that left this state, <laughs> <laughs> I'm voting him in. Why? What's wrong with people that left the state? What's the problem? They're just assholes. They're I, crying. I can't, I can't live here. It's too much. Costs too much. No, it doesn't. That is horse Shut shit. up. I honestly, I mean, I don't blame people. Like, it's hot as balls right now. Like, right now is the time I'd be like, I don't want to live in California. I, no, I get <laughs> in it. In Central Valley anyways. And it it is pricey. But none of them were bitching when they sold their houses for ungodly amounts right now. Oh, and drove the market a sky high uh, so that way I can't afford one. Yeah. Anybody who lives here, like, just decimating mobility Give it in a all year. facets. Yeah. Give it a year or two. Oh, no, of course. Buy and mm-hmm. low. I'm telling, uh, I'm telling people, oh, I told Courtney, I said, uh, I was like, we, it was a good thing that we plan on paying off your student loans because we couldn't afford a house over the next two years anyways. 
Are you upset that Joe Biden didn't forgive student loans like you said he was going to? Am I upset? Because I know that's why you voted for him. That's not why I <laughs> voted for him. <laughs> I voted for him because the other guy was Donald Trump. And he's amazing. And, yeah, God. And uh, they needed your help to be there. Him. There is a there is a much better person that was that was Joe Biden. Uh, but the but the Lazy student Joe. loans. Wait, what? He was a much better. He's a much better person. Oh. Are you going to disagree with that Joe Biden's a better person than Donald Trump? I didn't know he was even a person. Oh, come Yeah, on. he's like half-functioning person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's barely awake, bro. It, I will I say. You, gotta be, you have to be slightly more coherent to be considered a person. A person? <laughs> yeah. Clearly, I mean, I would agree with you, but I'm pro-choice. I'm pro-choice. Are you? Yeah. Oh, good for you. Then Fucking I guess you're choice. right. I choose not to like and, Joe and Biden. You know what? The logic all <laughs> the logic all makes sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the no, I don't vote party lines, dude. I don't, and I don't buy into I don't know left and right ideologies. You shouldn't. No, I, I, I'm also those things I make try to look less at things and less most, sense. I try to look at things most logically, you know. So like, as far as pro choice, it ain't my fucking choice. I know? don't think it's. I don't, I'm. I will never be in that position. So uh, I don't think it's really my. I, it's certainly never going to be my choice. No. Right. However, <laughs> right. I mean, even with that being said, do I think that? I mean, I think there is a moral aspect to it, but that's different from fucking law. Like in some regards, sometimes there is a difference there. But like, do I think it's murder? Yeah, absolutely. So do am I okay with murder? Apparently, apparently, apparently honestly, <laughs> to some extent. But like I, well, I, no, don't, it, I right? don't think that's okay necessarily. But I, at, at the same time, it's like, like I don't. Is I don't. it murder if you kill someone in your house who breaks in? Well, yeah, not yeah. Like when we're talking like law, so now it's I mean that know, manslaughter or I mean it's not yeah, manslaughter I mean, there's, if there's you intended to it. do it. I think the rule about them turning their back and running out, and you still put a bullet in them. That should probably be a little bit more. Well, no, because that rule is now you have committed manslaughter and it's on you yeah. and everything. As soon as they turn their back and they're out the door. But as they're coming at you and shooting, it's self-defense and you can Got get it. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's say let's say like That's it's a situation. Fuck, though. So is that they're like, still in the house. And right. like, yeah. I got 12 seconds before you make it out the door. Your right. ass is mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So turn around. <laughs> like, and this is the thing like I tell my friends. I'm just like, it sounds to me like it's a jurisdictional issue, not necessarily a uh, yeah. life one. Legally, right. I mean, like, how? I don't know if I, I'd probably be upset if somebody said, like, you can't uh, fix your liver. Sorry. Well, well, they, it's, well they, it's mine. I'm, they, I'd really like to. They might Thank tell you. you that. They won't yeah. give you a transplant for certain reasons. Yeah. See, and now I'd be upset. Why? Well, okay. If so they can't, they, that I can't. But fix, what if the reason if they is said I can't have a, a, a liver, liver transplant, transplant because you now there's, there's are, like logistical you, reasons. No, let's different. let's say because you drink like a fish and you abuse the fucking one you got. So why would we give you a fucking another good one? Okay, well now you're adding some contextual things that weren't even apparent. That weren't no, even there but before. No, but that's the shit that actually happens though. I don't know. Like if you if like for heart transplants, if you were a smoker, if you were a drug addict or a drug user like if you have histories of those things you don't get on that list or you get moved down it and rightfully so you should not be put up at the fucking top if you know what i mean you're slamming here oh yeah you right. should, yeah i i don't think that there's a hey doc i need a new liver <laughs> <laughs> this one's pickled <laughs> like you think that guy's gonna fucking stop it, yeah i mean, I not, mean not to say that you couldn't not as if change. livers are growing on trees to begin with but well, yeah, I, I mean, at the rate people are dying, why can't we just hand them well, out? Like I, during COVID, seems like there was a lot of livers to be handing out. That was to people. probably the time to to be in the market for a liver. Everybody was scared and we couldn't do it. And now that China's doing animal human hybrids, there's going to be a are lot. They? Of livers. Is that yeah. new? I yeah. haven't heard that. Is this real? Yeah. Is it's it like this? Like shut robots. up. They just passed. And there's a lot robots signs. adopting kids. Yeah. What? Wanting, wanting, yeah. wanting to adopt kids. The, the robots. Should, you should robot. have been listening to the fucking podcast, Paul. You'd be up to speed with us. I, if you would, if you would put it in a place, I could find it. The apocalypse is <laughs> at hand. God damn it! Really? Yeah. It's like man, bear, pig. Yeah, man, bear, pig is soon. <laughs> I was half just man, thinking that. Like, half bear, half pig. Yes. <laughs> hundred for hundred and fifty percent creature. Oh yes. shit! <laughs> man, bear, pig. Cereal. <laughs> Cereal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck China. I need you guys to stop nursing your beers because uh, it's been a long Tuesday for oh, me. Oh, you're right? on the, and you're I'm, the next. The first beer I'm in need. 
orange creamsicle. Or is that what it is? Yeah. Tangerine. The tangerine. tangerine. It was actually sickle. better than I thought it was going to be. All right. And for right. an 8%er, I felt pretty good about it. Ooh. Well, let's do a 10. Oh, here we Hop are. Hop Heroes, Volume 7. Didn't we drink this one too already? I've had it at bar. Did all these come from the uh, tavern? Yes. You know what uh, Brent Bell calls your guys' uh, tavern? The gay bar? No. <laughs> Although, yes. That's very hateful. So it's the uh, cockyard. Oh, tavern. yeah. Yeah. So we're heavy on the cock. <laughs> Slaying our, slinging our meat swords around over there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Rock out with your cock out. Well, I text you on Thursday. And I was just like, why is it like you have a new bartender every time I walk in there? I have to fire him all you the have, time. You have, like, you have a serious track record with firing. No, not. <laughs> well, I don't think we've ever fired anybody. Mm. They just leave us. Lucky you. They just leave. Have you ever had to fire someone? You were in management. That Never. Wasn't, that wasn't my job. I didn't have to worry about it. What do you mean it wasn't your job, isn't it? Aren't you like still a manager? No, actually, I, I left. I left uh, Edison. No, you didn't. Yeah, and I work mm-hmm. for uh, what? Le- for Hotline for electrical contractor now. Shut the fuck it's up. Same industry, just different company. So, what do you do now? Construction coordinator. And what is how is that different from the? Uh... I don't supervise people directly like I did. And I basically go out and spot the jobs, put the outages together, get. What are outages? What do you mean by outages? Like, like if we're going to go change a pole out, let's say, in front of your house, we find out how to keep your neighbors on and turn your fucking oh, power off. Oh, I see. Off. Yeah, so switching around, that kind of thing. Like, it's there's always work going on. You may not even know that, like, the circuit you're on is actually off. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's, there's that, like, material, environmental. There's all these little aspects to so it. So why the, uh, why the change? Is it uh, A little more freedom. Okay. A little more freedom. So you're at that point in your life? Yeah, a little more, um, a little less responsibility. A little more Super- rock and roll. Yeah, exactly. But supervising people is fucking... It's Dude, tough. it blows. It's tough. I mean, we talk about this a lot. It's, yeah. It's pain in the ass. So, all right, so... so well, no, 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 no. Well, I, no. I, I'm the one doing the interview now. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've derailed this enough with your leftist fucking propaganda. <laughs> How did That's you me. how did you get into journalism? Mm. Let's start there. Oh god. And we'll right. cut out this first fucking whatever shit minutes. show you've given us. The, the um <laughs> <laughs> the so I was unemployed. So that was a good start. Is that how they find journalists? <laughs> yeah. Um, that guy looks like you know, know how to write. There's a, a lot of them unemployed right now. So yeah. I'm, <laughs> in fact I'm looking for one as we speak. <laughs> An unemployed journalist? Uh there's a lot yeah, that Wait. actually a you, journalist who happens to be unemployed, but yes. Were you a journalist and unemployed, or were you no, just no, no. unemployed and then you became a journalist? I was just unemployed, and I needed money. So I thought that I would move on from my illustrious porn career, hmm. obviously. Obviously. Because, I mean, like, you know, there's not a whole lot of room make, in the industry for 230-pound redheads Yeah, with, like, 25% body fat and, Hard to raise and the whitest thing you've ever seen. So it just wasn't... Just wasn't a gig for me. Hard to raise a family on a fluffer salary. On a fluffer salary. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are the these guys are the grit in the industry. You don't even know. Yeah, the backbone. <laughs> and so, I <laughs> you need a strong backbone. Seriously. The uh, and a good euro stroke. The way it happened <laughs> was I start Patrick <clears throat> Dylan started. Uh, he wanted he wanted to be a journalist. Like he really wanted. And he said, hey, I'm freelancing for the Sun Gazette, Exeter Sun, whatever it was called at the time. Yeah. It was called the Sun Gazette, but we all called it the Exeter Sun. No, that's another thing. I, I don't like that you guys changed the fucking name. Of but course. Anyways, move on. Yeah. I had to give a whole talk on that the other day, last week. And <laughs> people in Exeter. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you about Barbara Sally whenever we're done with this story. Damn, name dropping like a son, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's also the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to get into the. I can't wait to get into the story. Anyways, I'm gonna quick, let her know. Quick story. You should. <laughs> she I'll is let her a know. friend oh, of the tavern. Really? She likes wine. Ah, good for her. And she likes Riverland. Mm-hmm. She likes what? Riverland. The the little lake. Oh, uh, bullfrogs yeah. or whatever that is now. Mm. Mm. Well, it's no, a different one. Wait, no, no, no. You're talking Teresa. Different one. That was Teresa. Oh, Teresa. Previous yeah. mayor. Yeah. That's Teresa. Two, two previous mayors. Yeah. Lo- lovely woman. Teresa. Anyways. So I, 
But anyways, you got into fucking journalism. <laughs> anyways, no way we're name dropping. I got <laughs> fucking got in journalism. journalism because I needed I needed money. money. I needed some Skrilla. And then at the and then I was freelancing for a while. Reggie figured out that I would like cover city council meetings too. So I started doing that more. That's exciting. It was exciting at the time because I had just graduated from school with a degree in government. So I was like, oh, this oh, sounds great. Yeah. And you ran for city council. I ran for city rather, council once. Rather young. Yeah, I was, tw- I was uh, 2012 and uh, didn't win. Uh, Obviously. Barbara's, Barbara Sally's husband, Dale, and uh, Robin Stearns won. Good. <laughs> Looking at how that turned out, I'm, I'm probably pretty happy. Um, you would have made a lot of bad decisions. So I would have made a lot of bad decisions at the time. Probably best. And so the other boss's son was the, what did you call it? He was the webmaster at the time. Not that he was like a real webmaster. Oh, for the He paper? was just like, yeah, he was just like, he was just a position made up so that way the boss's son could have a job. Oh, that's nice. That was, you, you know how it is. And nobody likes the boss's kids. Like, have you ever worked with the boss's kid? Like, it's awful. You have it's to like them. It's awful. Of, yeah, you have to like them. What like, it's a like, gun to your head. What if you like the boss's kid better than you like the boss? That's actually rare potential more potential than not has not been my experience or do you just dislike both of them well, i dislike the boss and i dislike this guy who was the boss's kid so anyways uh, he moved on like to you're, you're just a downer yeah for sure i'm i'm a skeptic at at best mm-hmm. and uh so anyways he moved on to college i stepped into his role so i was doing freelance and webmaster or whatever Made up position. Made up position. You were now which the then Reggie, side. yeah, which now Reggie used to make sure that I would like stay on because there wasn't anybody left, oh. like on staff that was competent, and that's the way it works around here. Like, if you need, if you want to do journalism at a local level, like you need people who are first of all smart, second of all a journalist. It doesn't really work the other way around because you don't get a lot of journalists, and you really don't get a lot of smart people. But they can be smart and write. They don't have to have a PhD in journalism. You can get a PhD in journalism. Yeah, like you can. A doctorate. Mm-hmm. That's dumb. <laughs> Not that I would, but yeah. Sorry, personal opinion. It sounds just as a waste as art school. <laughs> <laughs> a uh, doctor. That's and really how I got into journalism. I, making shit up. Yeah. Just, they <laughs> Google a lot of stuff. Yeah. That's the, the doctors. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they do. They step out of the room. I've no, I've read, I, I, I know doctors who are just like, I just do more research than other people, but that's it. Oh, that's how I'm like, hey. what? <laughs> I was shocked. That's cool. Did you, where'd you go to school for it? For journalism? Yeah. I didn't go to school for journalism. You didn't? So you're fucking made up. They picked you up homeless on the street because you were unemployed and they fucking they gave didn't pick you me a up job. because I was unemployed. Well, it's what you just said. You were going to look for somebody that was unemployed. To give them a job. Apparently, you yeah. don't have to be a fucking journalist. I wasn't on the street okay. either. Now, now, going back to what you just said, you have to be a journalist and you have to be smart. Bro, no, you can be smart and it would be nice if you were a journalist. But you're neither. He was a fluff. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, I see. See, here's the third part. Hard working. That's oh. the... Uh, and as a fluffer, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Hardest worker. The hardest worker. That, like, the, the grit of the industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, tr- truth is, I got a full time position because I just showed up to the desk that the old that the other guy was working at every day. Yeah, and I just said like, "All right, well, I'm just going to be here and, and actually, work every day." That's quite impressive. It was. It yeah, was I was <laughs> thinking that you went to college for it. Mm-mm. You went to college though, right? Yeah. What do you have a degree in? Public administration. Okay. It's business administration, but for the uh, public sector. Sweet. So you could be on city council. I, I mean, anybody could be on city council. Oh. And and that's the way it works. <laughs> like, there's a lot of people in well, city council that be, probably shouldn't be. You could be, be a, in the administration for the city. Yeah, I could work. Yeah, I could. I could probably walk into like a city hall and learn the position in a few whatever position in a few months. I think a lot of people could. Yeah, it's not. It's not that tough. Like the only, I don't, the I don't only thing talk, I don't want to talk trash on them, but Wait, who, who, none of them. Oh, really? No. I, well, I was mad at everybody <laughs> at one point during the pandemic, but that was just because everybody drug their fucking feet. And there's other things that I get irritated well, with. So like, I just sound like an old man now, just like an old no, yeah. crotchety fucking old man that gets mad. Like 
Well, so like you, you understand, yeah. I mean like Edison and Edison and government are not that different. No, right? absolutely like, not. They're it's almost the same, the same. thing. It's and it's because once you get to like an organizational size, you start losing the quality of, of people that you hire. Mm -hmm. Like that's why small businesses but typically the, say small. You know what? And the truth about that is too, is that a lot of the quality of the output takes a hit too. Yeah. Which is, so that's the furniture fucking story. Oh shit. Is <laughs> the it, dude, it was like all kinds of shit. What did Ashley do? So that bitch. <laughs> Ashley. So this is how I become the, the interviewer. Right. Yes. This is the tables have turned. We're, we're done listening to your fucking, how you, you, fucking swindled your way to you, become the fucking editor I love of the, a newspaper. I love the term swindled in this. You as, if I, as if I stole it from somebody. You did. You like some traveling carny that's like, yeah, hey, I can edit the fucking newspaper. I'll I know it. how to do that. I can spell words good. I just, rose my, I just raised my hand the fastest. Yeah. So who wants a job? Uh, I'll do it. I need monies. So Yeah, that's good. Uh, my arm's tired. <laughs> <laughs> I need to do something different. <laughs> this line of work, it just like it comes to an end every now and again. The like carpal tunnel. How many, how many words per minute can you type <laughs> with your knuckles? <laughs> 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 All right. So the furniture. Go dude, on. I was actually leaving Edison. I'd put in my two weeks. Had a tentative start date for the new job. Okay. But I told him I want two weeks off. I'm going to be unemployed. Like, since I was 17, like, I'm not going to have a fucking job, basically. Wait, so you put in your two weeks, and you said, like, these two weeks, I'm not coming into work? No, no, no. I put, I finished my two weeks at okay. Edison, but then I had a following two weeks, I was unemployed. So it was there was a break between employment with Edison and employment with the new company. So when you say unemployed, do you mean just, like, two-week vacation? Or do you mean just, like, More you had zero, <laughs> no, I had zero job income. prospects? Yeah. No, no, no. I No, I had a job, but I was not officially in that job yet. I'm, I'm missing the unemployed. I don't know if you understand the term what unemployed I, meant. What the fuck is unemployed, Paul? It sounds to me like <laughs> you were employed by on delay. Who? who was fucking... You knew you had a job in two weeks. So every two weeks, I'm normally <laughs> collecting a paycheck. The new job, I actually get it every fucking week. There was two fucking weeks. I didn't get a goddamn paycheck. You missed a week Am of I? paycheck. That's fucking unemployed, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> If I was to the, go to anybody and they're like, who's your employer? If I was applying for a fucking yeah. loan, they're like, who's your current employer? I'm like, nobody. Because that's a fucking truth. Did I you do that? The, I, yes, I was not on the fucking books. <laughs> did you? No, I'm saying, did you apply for yes, unemployment? Yes, I did. Just to prove that I was fucking unemployed. <laughs> I went and said, can I get a loan, please? They said, who's your boss? I said, I don't fucking have one. They said, get the fuck out of here, street rat. <laughs> I don't think that happened. They did. Okay. So anyways, two fucking weeks, I was unemployed. <laughs> It's a very liberal term of unemployed. You're a fucking liberal. He, no, he missed out on a paycheck. That's very liberal. Yeah. He chose to <laughs> miss out on the paycheck. I should have came up with unemployment. <laughs> I should have signed it. Yeah. Got some EDD. <laughs> you, I don't know why you would have like gone through. You could have just gotten thousands of dollars by defrauding them. So I stopped listening to you a little bit ago. So <laughs> Moving on. Is Anyways. it because the headphones cut out? Because I would believe that. No. It, it had nothing to No. It had, don't touch it. Don't touch it. It had nothing to do with that. I just... I was fucking unemployed, Paul. Okay. We're going to we're gonna go ahead and go with that story. So back to the You're not even story. a real journalist. <laughs> now You weren't I even really that. unemployed. <laughs> there we go. So anyways, <laughs> for two fucking weeks, I didn't have anything to do. So... <laughs> We were buying new furniture. So, Janie, we went shopping. We went to Ashley Furniture. We went to Moore Furniture. Right? We picked something out. Did you... So, whenever you... I've never bought furniture in my life. Ever. I've, I've So, like, when you times. go through the process of, like, buying furniture, like, is it... Like, I know that people, like, finance it. Like, is that, like, a requirement? No. Is it really expensive? Like, no. Is it, okay. No. So, we had actually had... Saved up for this. Like, this had been in the plans for okay, a little yeah. bit of getting new furniture. Your typical unemployed family. Yeah, yeah. typical unemployed. We've been scraping by, cashing in the cans. Yeah, whatnot, I get it. Doing what we can. <laughs> Sold a kid. Uh huh. That sped up the process. So, would you just fucking let me tell I'm you? I'm listening. Story? Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we picked the fucking furniture out. This is, this is the part that's annoying to me. It's literally in the showroom, right? The only thing that isn't, there's a couch and a love seat, but there's also a chair that matches, right? And I'm telling Janie, like, we should get the chair, too, because I think the chair would be cool. Girl's like, actually, there's an ottoman. I'm like, oh, perfect. 
I'm like, so when can those be here? And she like starts looking stuff up, says, oh, it'll be like a couple weeks. I'm like, all right, cool. Well, we're obviously going to take the couch and the love seat. No, they don't give you the shit on the showroom floor. That's not for sale. It's got to oh. come from their warehouse. And I'm like, oh, okay, so it's all coming. They end up telling us it's going to be, it was like June, fucking I don't remember, right? Like beginning of the month. No, it was in May. So anyways, whenever it was, this shit's supposed to come on, on this Saturday. And we are got it all planned out. The week before, Janie puts on Facebook that we're getting rid of our couches. Like, hey, does anybody want these? They're for sale, $50 a piece, blah, blah, blah. Wow, that's a good deal. Yeah, and, and like a lot of times we've just given stuff away because we're like, you know. You just want it off your hands. Yeah, yeah. otherwise it's going out to 264 and dumping it on the side <laughs> of the fucking road <laughs> like everybody else does. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, these are nice couches. So anyways, friend ended up hitting us up and took everything, right? So we're like, hey, come through on Tuesday, whatever day works for you. Like the day she posted it, it was fucking 30 minutes later. He's yeah. like, hey, I want it. He comes the next day, comes, picks it up. I'm making this a fucking long story, a long story. But anyways. As long as you ended in a long cast, story short. Yeah, I'm not going to say that. The casting couch here ended up <laughs> in the living room. Oh, And then there was no. another chair that we had in our bedroom that, it, that was like our furniture for the living room. Supposed to be for like three, four days, right? Saturday rolls around. I'm calling just to make sure they're supposed to, you know, hey, what time are you going to be here? End up finding out. That stuff is not available. It's not ready. It's not going to be here until this piece comes in on June 1st. This one comes June 8th. This one comes June 11th. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like, you know, it's coming from Long Beach, blah, blah, blah. Like, dude. and and said Saturday. They said Saturday. Yeah, it wasn't that day. It wasn't. It was. It wasn't. And this was back in May because this actually was like a month ago, dude. Like, and we just got the furniture finally. But we went literally three weeks without with with this fucking deal and like lawn furniture in the in the living room. <laughs> it seems like such a grand living room at that. Well, like it is. That is just, the definition of like house rich. This is you know? this is nice to sit on for like an hour to do this shit. Yeah. Try fucking. It's a futon, but try yeah, laying on it. It fucking sucks, bro. Mm-hmm. This is not fucking comfortable. Well, there's no arms to it. No, and that's so, the deal. Like, you lay down a, with a pillow. It just fucking squeezes. It squeezes yeah, out like yeah. like a fucking like a wet cloth. Like it's like what the fuck. Well, so, yeah. I mean, the whole thing was aggravating. But then that whole thing, I went through this deal, like a Karen moment, where I'm like, I want to talk to your manager. Type oh yeah. Of thing. And it, and even as I'm like. Well, girl, sometimes you need to. I mean, honestly, yeah. So I, I just, I found myself through the steps of that. I, like I said, I made this long story. I kept it long. But this is the main point of it, was that I ended up talking to the girl I'm talking to first, right? And I can just tell in her tone. Like, she, she one. She's had enough of your shit. No, one, it, it literally is not, it's not her job. She has, yeah. It, this doesn't pertain to what she actually, she's like, I just sell well, the fucking furniture. Well, so I, th- let me pause you for a second because the only reason why you recognize that is because you have managed mm-hmm. things in the past. Yeah. So you know that the person you're dealing with can only take you so far. Right. And you're ready to go above her head before you even speak to her. Yeah. Like, so like, you know that she's just clickety clacking on the computer. I, I, was, I was expecting what, you know, what her response was. And yeah. then also the other part of it is I can tell she doesn't fucking care. Which I'm like, rightfully so. You got this has nothing to do with you. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? Is there someone I can talk to about this? Like, I just need a better answer. Like, why were we not told? What the hell's going on? You know, you're giving me three or four days. And then also you're telling me they don't deliver to Exeter on Saturday. And I'm like, <laughs> what day do they deliver? And they're like, well, like on Tuesdays and Fridays. And I'm like, well, can I just go pick it up? She's like, well, if you want to drive all the way to Brentwood. I'm like, oh. what the fuck? <laughs> So then I end up getting, I talked to like an operator and that's and that and this is how you know a company is too big is when you have a fucking call center. Yeah. Mm. Right? Like that that's too much at that point. Because then now I'm talking to somebody, it's this back and forth bullshit. Janie ends up getting pissed and fucking calling them after the fact too and going through the I just threw my hands up I'm like, you know what? Fine, just let me know when they're fucking here. Like, thanks a lot. Like, you know, there was no heads up, no yeah. nothing. Now it's just time to deal with your anger. I mean, then they're literally like, Well, you, you know, if uh, your wife's email was on the on the deal. She should have got an email notice saying, you know, there was this update. She didn't get shit. Of course it didn't not. Show up because I'm like, Janie, check your email. She's like, nope, nothing there, and yeah. not not a fucking word from him. Well, then she ends up bitching him out, and they are like, well, we're going to actually refund you three hundred dollars, you know, on your purchase. So I'm like, 
Well, that's a well, that's a bonus, but like, hey, thanks for fucking. I still I, I still got nothing in there. If I could, if I gave you an extra three hundred dollars, could I get it here faster? So right. that's what I was like. Can you keep it and just fucking get it here? Yeah. So here's the here's the great part about the three hundred dollar refund. It came in the form of Ashley gift cards. <laughs> like. Wow. You can go so, fuck yourself. So did you feel your nuts being kicked? When I got... Because that's I got, what happened. When I opened up the, the deal from Ashley, they I'm like, it looks like a like a birthday card. So I'm like, oh, this is like an apology like no. card, you know? And it's like, hey, thank you for being a valued customer. And Obviously, like you want to shop here again. Yeah, there's two gift cards. I'm like, I'm just throwing them in the fucking trash. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, fuck them, you know? Yeah. And, and it, But it made me think, ultimately, about how big that company is and how how fucking separated all these aspects are to it like it's just it's a showroom and there's all these little weird rules of like you know, the stuff on the showroom floor that's not for sale fuck you give me the discount i'll take it for cheaper because it's a floor model like yeah what the hell you know and then the the, the girl that's in there selling the stuff to us like she was a real sweet girl we actually talked to her the day before and then we went back, but we're also the time the kind that are like we ask her, hey, when do you come? Are are you working tomorrow? We oh. we know you're getting the commission. We know Boy. this underline, right? Yeah, right. So we're like, we want to come make sure we talk to you again. Yeah, we want because she was very helpful mm -hmm. by all means. It was actually a great experience until the fucking shit was supposed to be there. Yeah, and then that it just hit the wall, and it was like very little fucking care. Dude, very little shits given. Hundred you know? percent, and and more and more we like live in the call center world. Where we're just like, well, or or the worst thing is just like, have you tried going online and uh, figuring this shit out for yourself? Right. Because I'm just like, wow, so they pay you for fucking what? Right. And what I've learned more and more now, because we, I mean, the newspaper makes money on legal notices that people just have. It's, it's an arcane law that we make money on. That's just the way that it is. Yeah. And one of those things is a fictitious, you know, fictitious, fictitious business, business name, which is really like if if a judge said this is stupid, it could end right away. Yeah, who's it's, looking them up? Yeah, right. <laughs> and so, but like no judge has, so thankfully that's that's the case. However, we're still making money. We get people who like have come into the newspaper, and all they want is to is to just have this process explained to them. And so, like right. the Times Delta, they they have actually just like they're. You can't even walk into their lobby and talk to somebody. And so, like, people walk into our office and they're just like, I tried going through the Times Delta, but, like, I don't understand what's going on. And then we we cost more than some other places. And they're just like, hey, we're just glad that somebody answered the fucking phone. Right. That's... Uh, I mean, ultimately, right? Like, you want to talk to a person. Uh, to and a you a certain want, point. And that's... And really, I don't mind... Having a call center to to an extent. I just need somebody that's going to be able to direct it. But the problem is, is that when you're not trying to cover all of your potential issues as yeah. a business and, uh, you know. Well, shit gets missed. Customer when satisfaction. You, when you're big. Well, yeah. And it's the same thing with like Edison. There's a call center that you call into when you're having like a power outage, right? And like the people. They, oh, I just wait. I'm they, just like, oh, there's no point in me looking it up. But like, sometimes, the, it's, sometimes it's your house, like only yours. Oh, really? You know, like say you got a problem on the line, right? So it's it's because your service has gone bad or something like that, right? Yeah. Now, if it's an actual outage, like the whole neighborhood's out. Yeah, easy enough. Maybe it's like planned, maybe it isn't. But usually if it's something big like that, you know they're going to respond, right? But like, you know, somebody that's just having issues, say it's like literally we a ton of the calls that would go to, they were just breakers. You know, breakers in the panel. The people just didn't know how to reset them fully. And that wasn't a big deal, but then like I'd go and talk to them and they would be like, oh yeah, you know, the person at the call center was walking me through how to reset them. You know, you got to hold it for 30 seconds before you do it, yeah. you know, and it's like, no, you don't, <laughs> you <know? laughs> and, but it's, you know, it, it's me being nitpicky where I'm like, no, like, cause I'm going and flipping them real quick and they're like, oh, you're, you're supposed to wait, you know, 10 seconds or 30 seconds. I'm like, no, no, you don't have to like, I don't know. Like a manufacturer tells you that because then. <laughs> You know, now and Edison probably tells you that too because they don't want liability either. Saying like, you know, if I'm over there flipping breakers and I break one, you know, mm -hmm. which has happened, but I've gladly replaced it for somebody. So, but, but yeah, seriously, it's like, it's like that type. Is, I mean, like it is service. Yes, like if you have 100%. good service from a place, yeah, you like like especially now where so many things are automated and online, 
When you right. have good service from a person, you're just like, oh, this guy's a godsend. Like all of a sudden, right. he's like, he listened, he re- he he interpreted, he responded, right. like basic human shit. <laughs> yeah, and you're just like, oh gosh, just fantastic company. You know, like that's all it takes. You just need a good, positive experience through it. Yeah, you and, know, and, and people, it, and like that's so undervalued because when people experience that, they become advertisers for you. Oh, 100%. Like they say like, oh, no, 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 don't go to that person. Go to this place. I'm telling you right now, if that stuff had been delivered on the day that it was, it had been said, and, and the thing is too, even from the get-go, if we had found out that this was going to be two months down the road, that would have been okay because we wouldn't have fucking sold our furniture that week of thinking we needed to make room, you know, and make it yeah. easy on us. So You like, made you made reasonable plans right. based on the information that you were provided by the professionals. Right. And that was the other thing I struggled with where I was like, am I just being like a bitch about no. this? Because, like, I'm being like, <laughs> no, you were I just want to just write it. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm in the fucking right, right here. I'm not in the wrong. Like every, That's what every Karen thinks, all too, my so feelings, you got to be careful. No, I'm fucking gold, bro. <laughs> Well, ultimate fucking Karen in that one. I was right. I was like, I want to see the fucking manager, yeah, and the CEO. <laughs> I think I think you lost it. And when you go to the CEO, they're yeah. just like, I don't think that's ever gonna happen. So they're like, he's playing golf. So is it safe to say that Ashley Furniture is not a sponsor of this podcast? Uh, no, they're three hundred dollar fucking sponsor at this point, <laughs> <laughs> motherfuckers. Did they give you like? A three hundred dollar gift card, or did they give you no, like it's like two like twenty five dollar gift cards that add up to three hundred? It was two of them that it added up to three hundred. Honestly, if they would have given me like, I, I probably would have kept those, just handed them out as gifts. I, no, that would have been Jamie, good. Jamie probably held on to them, or my yeah. kids probably dug them out of the trash, leads sell them to somebody. Who knows? <laughs> Speaking of service, though, by the way, because Courtney got into a car accident Uh-oh. a couple weeks back, a few weeks back, I don't know how long ago it was. She's okay. She's fine. Good. And uh, we, so anyways, we had to get her a new car, total car. Oh, fucking total. Lift. Really? I, a few years ago, I learned of this guy named Dan Del Campo. And he is like a car broker. Like you tell him what you want, like roughly how many miles, uh, how much you want to spend and what, like, and like what color and like some of the other specifics. And he's like, okay, I'll, I'll take a look. And I'll like call you back whenever it's like available. And he's like, Hey, I got this car. This is like, this is a situation. Here are some pictures. What do you think? And then you say like yay or nay or like keep looking. He steals it? I don't ask oh. that. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. And uh, so so like he's the one that got me my car. He's gotten us like our work van. He's got Reggie his car, our old owner her car. Um, and then like he got Courtney this new car that she drives now and hopefully doesn't crash. And uh, For her sake. Yeah, for her sake. Sure. And I mean, yeah. And, uh, (laughs) and so like I called him, I was like, this is how much money I have on hand. Like, can't, is there anything in that price range? Like you can get me. He's like, absolutely. It was like $3,000 that we had like saved up. Right. I was like, it was like, does that work? Cause I wanted something that's going to last like the next few years. Right. So I was like, okay, like $3,000 might get us there. He's like, I got this one car, like this Mazda, like Mazda 2008 Mazda touring Mazda three touring, whatever it is. For like 170,000 miles. I was like, okay. I was like, there's like they I, doing some research. Like these things will run for 300,000 miles. Yeah. And you know, Japanese major actually. Yeah. Right. Good. So, uh, so I talked to him and I was just like, okay, let me see if I can get another $2,000. Borrow money from Reggie, obviously, which I think he may just like forgive. Say obviously. <laughs> I, your, my parents don't have two grand to just give your, me. <laughs> he's your loan chart. Well, he borrowed it off the company. Oh. So like. Oh, it's a company vehicle now. It's a company vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I was just like, okay, like I got 5,000. He's like, 5,000 will be great. Whatever. So we go, we pick it up. It's great. And like he tells me, and I, and I think this is the first time I realized how like vacant the market is for used cars right now. Like if you go on the. Oh. It, I mean, it is Dude, low, low. Cars, low, low, low. RVs, boats, motorcycles. Like, it, it's this, just, this it, shit's out, out of control. So, like, if you go to the... I was I was on Ben Maddox and Mineral King, the, like, Ford <clears throat> yeah. UA Honda, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I was like, it, it's like a... Like, parts of that lot are just, like, a ghost town. Right. And so, when we went to go pick it up, he's like, honestly, I probably could have sold this thing for, like, another, like, five grand. Probably easily. He's, he's like... He's like, but you've been really good to me. Like you guys get your cars through me. Like you let people know about me. 
and that's and that's worth its weight in gold. So like, I'm happy to sell this to you for for five k. That's crazy. And I was like, broker. I was just like, this is service. Like yeah. this is what we miss now right. when we deal with companies right that get too big. Like we, like I now have a car guy who's just like, hey, I'll take care of you. There, there's just a big disconnect. Well, yeah, it's huge, it's, it's, huge. It's about building that relationship and maintaining it and right. all that. Aspect. Well, you get, you get loyalty from your customer base and you get, you know what, you know what I feel like it is too, is that it's, it's kind of across the board. It's authenticity it has gone away and like genuine things like almost don't exist in a lot of the space that we operate in now, you know? So like relationships aren't really all that genuine sometimes and not all that authentic, you know, which is that's a bit, and that's any relationship across the board, but then you put it into business and it's like, you know, we're always talking about mom and pop shops, you know, and small businesses. That's where you find that though. That's where you get that connect, you know, that connection, but it's, well, it's, it's, it's transactional. Yes. And like this and like mom and pop shops, like, yeah, you are spending your money there, but like the relationship that you have with these people, because you know that we all know that money isn't going anywhere and we all need it. Right. So like if way you choose to spend your money is important. Well, there's Bitcoin, but you know. Oh God. No, there's Doge. And Doge. Uh, and Doge. Yeah. <laughs> right. And fuck Doge. Evo. <laughs> uh, Elethium. No, Evo Jima. Evo. There's there's a guy I work with that keeps talking about it. He's like, just needs to go up to a cent. And I'm like, well, he bought a bunch of like negative. <laughs> 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 Apparently he can retire. But so like, you know, yeah, spending your money with these people is you know, a part of the relationship, but also choosing to spend your money with them is a yeah. bigger part of the relationship. Well, and then you 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 build a loyalty. I mean, it's like we we went and we bought a, a vehicle from Richards in Corcoran. Bought a truck from there because it was the color Janie wanted. Nobody had it. And actually, at that point, I was like, that, you know, it's kind of nice. It's the brown truck, right? So we go out there. We meet with them. It's actually pleasant experience for buying a car. It went really well, went smooth. We end up buying the truck. And we bought three cars from those guys since. We've gone all the way to Corcoran for it. Right. And it's just like, we like dealing with these guys. Yeah. They're good people. They're... I, you know, and you always hear like the term of, you know, used car salesman or car salesman, you know, and like it, there, there's a little bit of that, you know, where they're, well, there's they're, craftsmanship. They're, they're selling it to you, but there is some, there not some, there is some real authenticity to it. Yeah. There, there's some real genuine, you know, conversation and feelings in there that we're, <laughs> we're sharing with this in this experience that it makes it more enjoyable. Well, like I, I can tell the authenticity in like a business relationship when the person you're dealing with does something for you that works against their own interest. Absolutely. Like you like used car salesmen, say whatever you want about them. Like, like my guy, Dan Del Campo, like he would say like, you don't want that car if you're looking for this. Right. It's like I have it. I have plenty of them. I'd love to get rid of them, but I don't want to give it to you because that's not what you're looking for. Right. Like, thanks, Dan. Right. appreciate that. I'm not the expert here. You are. Instead right. of getting some salesman that just wants to make commission off just you. gives you a lemon. Just need a sale. That's it. Mm-hmm. You like, know, and it's the same thing with like the furniture and stuff, but here's the other deal too. Like <laughs> there's another side part to this as far as being a consumer. You can't be a fucking asshole as a consumer. Oh, the idea oh, that yeah. you go into a situation with the assumption that the consumer the customer is always right. You're a fucking prick for, for <laughs> living under that <laughs> assumption. Because I guarantee you the first person to ever say that was indeed a was, customer. Yeah, what well, well, was an <laughs> asshole? Like, the first person that was like, nope, customer's always fucking right. Like, yeah, because you're a fucking dick. I, I gotta be honest with you. What does that mean? So, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what that means. It feels like if there was ever an argument that you should always settle up with them, you know, I guess. Like, they would always be in... It, it basically, what it means to me would be the business owner always has to please no matter what. So when you've got a Karen yeah. that's really going balls to the wall, it's like, okay, at any means, we're going to get her calm. We're going to give her gift cards. We're going to take com- care of them. Yeah. Conquer items. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, look, I, like, you know, even in that the furniture situation, it's like, I don't, I'm not asking for a fucking discount. I'm just asking for some fucking honesty here. You're asking for, for, for 
honest service. Kind of like an answer, really more than anything. <laughs> it's like, well, we're going to be waiting on an ottoman. I'm like, motherfucker, send me everything but yeah. the fucking ottoman. Yeah, if you're like, waiting, if the ottoman's the one that's holding yeah. this thing up. I'm like, and if I'll they're wait. coming in a week at a time, bring me a piece at a fucking time. I'm like, I'll send you a picture of my living room. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sitting on a casting couch. Do you know what that is, ma'am? The I just I just can't I just I just can't stand bad service. Really it it is it is tough, but that's also possibly being beat down though too by asshole customers. You know, oh you that's get, true, and you know that too. You get I a, definitely know it. You get enough <laughs> fucking people hanging on your ass. Good example of good service. This guy Connor. There was a couple years ago. There's an old guy. He cut you off. Which one? Who, which one? Which right? one? <laughs> there's a few. <laughs> I think, I think there's something, I think he's, I think there's something wrong. they got big ears? With him. Yes. Big pointy ears. Oh, we know like, that guy. Well, we know him. What's his name? We can't say it. We're really? Name we, dropping. We, we like we, I like him. him. We like him. He was actually in there today. Well, okay. He's so in there every day. Using the restroom again. <laughs> nice. He wears like dirty baggy clothes. Like I think. Yep. W- wheelchair or no wheelchair? No wheelchair. Okay. Well, he's on a wheelchair now. He's in one. Oh, right is now. he? Well, yeah. it's a rascal. Anyway, he, he used it to get around town. Uh, I like okay. it. He's a nice guy. He, I, he, he was a little <laughs> aggressive. I love hate. Yeah. Him. He was like aggressive with like me and like a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And like, and he wasn't like invited into the conversation. Like, you know who this guy is. Right. I mean, like, but we like tolerate him. We're just like, okay, th- this guy clearly doesn't have anything else going on. Mm-hmm. You know, like, we're, he's like, a different guy. No, he knows who I'm talking about. Uh, it's It's dopey. It, it's oh, yeah, it's it? Dopey. It is. Yeah, yeah. That, okay. Thank you, Dopey. <laughs> perfect name. And uh, he was like a he was a little much mm-hmm. like, and it was and it was kind of clear that I was just uh, like I didn't look at you to just see like, hey, do something. But like, he did. You're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> waving the white flag. Help yeah. Me. <laughs> I I was, but I was like visibly annoyed. And like, there was Connor, like you know, bartender of the year, like to the rescue, who was just like, hey, hey, hey Dopey, whatever they called him, mm-hmm. like relax like you need to you need to like move on like down the bar right and i was like thanks man like i didn't ask for your help mm-hmm. like i wasn't even expecting it but like you were just like i you can read re- room yeah right. but i can read a room and react appropriately right. and i was like that's that's not necessarily uh ingrained in people anymore no no but and yeah exactly till i <laughs> well come on because most people will probably pull out a cell phone and just fucking record the awkward oh yeah transaction mm-hmm. that's going on there where they're like Listen, you just stared at him like, motherfucker, help me. Quit recording me. <laughs> like, no, this is funny. <laughs> so, what? How does oh, your God. relationships go oh, with you being an editor? You how guys do, are the that? worst interviewers. No, we're not. Like, yo, you're not good. You're, you're defensive yeah. is what nope. the problem is. <laughs> nope. That's I'm not. not the case. That's well, not there was the a case law on the moment, so I had to propose a fucking question. I don't Actually, I was <laughs> going to. Like, did you? I like, was actually going to You went to on. editor on that? Well, no, 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 it was relationships. Yeah, that relationships. Was actually, that's the next re- subject. Relationships that was as edit- is there is mean? there a show is there a show notes here? Yeah. Listen, are listen. we th- are we that pro? Listen, yeah. you need to calm down, ma'am. All right, <laughs> <laughs> You're getting to way too defensive. Just relax. Okay, I'll let you You're ask. You're on your... the casting couch. Can just we <laughs> let it happen? It's it's easier if you just relax. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Goes a lot easier. If you can, just I know shut up. can I know it's what else? <laughs> and don't let it out. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it tight. What else is in these show notes? I didn't even know that so, we were going to be that structured. Oh, the we talk we about go over? talk about your work and hobbies. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. So we talked about work and hobbies. We did. Because you're a fluffer and a journalist. Fluffer journalist. And That's then work. we're going to talk about your relationships, how you maintain them, how I maintain relationships. Just all relationships or no, like work it just relationships. Depends. Well, he at listen. Shut the fuck up, first of all, and we'll get to there. Yeah. The first thing I asked was the <laughs> relationships, how you, like how you said with your car salesman. You, oh, you have a right. relationship there. We That is a relationship. Mm-hmm. So also, mine was actually, I was going to go into your marriage. Okay. But only because, Relatively new. only because you're a newlywed. Yeah. And that's why. So relationships is one of them. Okay. Also health. Your mental health and physical health is all kind of Mental health and physical one. health, right. Both of those are intertwined. It's all health together. What was the other one? Uh, there's like a loose one. It just kind of was random. It was kind of like a loose fourth, and we always fucking we were also supposed to put them on the board so we would remember these things. You basically. know, the fact that you guys just like remember them, like you don't have like a sheet in front of you, no. I can tell. Well, because we always Good find a way. Guys. We always find a way to kind of stay down that line because they yeah. kind of well, like literally, you're talking about your car salesman. Yeah, well, relationships, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like into that, and then because I think and, what threw me off is that like as editor, so mm-hmm. I was just like, wow, really taking it back to work on this one. Well, he's. 
if you let him finish the question, he did trying to full circle question. everything. Yeah. As an editor, like okay. your relationships with other people, like does it does it affect your relationship with other people? Essentially, here's the deal. You're trying to name drop like some bitch, and we know you've been attacked a few times on <laughs> as being an editor, so we understand that. Well, sometimes Sitting here like, on the couch with you, I want to attack you all the time. I bet. <laughs> so that's part of it. Also, you're a newlywed, so there's an option there. Well, so like the to to address the na- the name dropping one. It's not I don't consider it name dropping whenever you it's, write them all the when time. When it's public records. Well, because it's, yeah, because I like talk to these people pretty often. And, and, and like as long as they're okay And they're with also it. like Exeter, you know, name as, drops. Like I don't think they're necessarily that big of a deal. They're okay with it. And or look, as long as you're okay with it, we're okay with it. 100. Well, Barbara <laughs> Sally's the mayor of town, we're, we're and just evidently tired. she's upset with us because more people don't know that she's mayor of town. <laughs> we so like here just, we are. We're just tired of having people want to retract what they say on this show, bro. Do you know how many times I've had an interview where somebody said like, "Don't use that." After they said it, and I was just like, "That's the most important thing you've said." That was the juiciest cut you had. Yeah, and, and, and it's not even like juicy. It was like, "This is the part that makes the most sense out of all Again, the ridiculous shit you said." It's the authenticity of things too, where it's like, "Look, that was a fucking genuine answer." Like, how come we can't stand behind it? Well, more than that, like I get really upset at people who do that because I've never had a track record of burning somebody mm. for like something stupid they said. Like, I will always, and I mean always give people the benefit of the doubt. Like they'll say something that is completely ridiculous. And I'll be like, is that, is that what you meant to say? Cause this is the way it sounds like, and if Stupid. I write it, yeah. And if I write it this way, it's gonna, it's gonna come across a lot worse. So like, do you want to rephrase that? And if they go like, Nope, love it. And I'm like, okay, you just signed your own warrant. As, as That's far how as I'm I concerned. do things. Well, me and you've had that conversation at the bar, but it's not on an interview basis. You, no, yeah, you right. should have told me like, you just, you, you mean that the way you mean? I'm like, yeah, mean, fuck yeah. I you do. meant that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Don't look at me funny. Stupid. I don't want to be, yeah. I don't want to be the guy that's accused of like burning a source because, or burning an interview mm-hmm. because like they said something and I just wrote it down accurately. I'm like, Hey, this is, you sound fault. stupid. <laughs> Do you want to change that? I'm like, no. no okay, that's, that's fine. That's the best part about having the video. It's like you're physically <laughs> seen saying it and heard. That's, I mean, like the way that VR now, I mean, like the, the adjustments that are made to video yeah. is, and, and AI, it's incredible. I, I, don't, I don't even trust, I don't even trust video we'll, anymore. We'll get to robots in a minute. Let's, yes. let's, let's. I talk love a, talking about, do you, so I we, watched Ex Machina. Wait, we got to talk a little bit about <laughs> your relationships, relationships <laughs> and then we'll get it. Cause trust me, bro, the robot zombies, it's, it's a fucking thing. So I, I agree. Okay. <laughs> relationships. As far as, as far as relationships go, uh, the professional and personal relationships and in, in the community are very intertwined. Hence why I like to wear the mask, even though we don't have to wear the mask anymore. Because I, I refuse to go to the extra save mart now. Mm-hmm. I go to the one, in fact, I won't even say it. Like, I don't go to the Exeter one because there isn't a way to just go in and get coffee and get, like, you know, a, a bag of coffee and move on. Like, you you Someone's go in, you get the coffee, you. and then you're, like, waiting in line. Or there was one time I went, and I, and I, was, wearing, I was wearing this shirt, maybe the polo, and there was the cashier woman who was just like, hey, you guys don't like pick up the papers anymore like the old papers. Now, the answer to that is, of course we don't because there's a barcode and you scan them so we know how many you sold. You just throw the rest away. Sorry, you didn't get the fucking memo. <laughs> but what I said was, does it, the, I was like, so I'm here in front. And what I, I swear to God, I said like, I'm standing here in front of you and I'm, and I'm buying groceries. Does it look like I'm working to you? <laughs> You're wearing a sun <laughs> you know, and she, Yeah. And she was like, well, you're wearing the, the Sun Gazette shirt. And I was like, I said, like, I do I work here? And she said, no. And I was like, I, and I, I was like, then, then, you know, maybe just this isn't the appropriate time to ask. And like, so and that you, was it. <laughs> so you snap at people? I snapped at her because <laughs> I was like, this is ridiculous. So anyways. Uh, but Maybe yeah. it's so much that I don't go as much as I'm not allowed to go <laughs> to oh, the extra so safe part bit, anymore. A little bit of both. <laughs> but like it like that that happens. And most people are like really well intentioned, like in Exeter. Like they are very nice people who are just like, oh hey, like it's nice to catch up with you and so on and so forth. And that's like the way that Exeter is right. for a lot of the community here. But like for me, I'm just like, I am 
exhausted and all I want to do is just go home or like I need to do this real quick because I'm going somewhere. Right. And that's just contrary to the way most people here like live their lives. And so like I don't want to be rude, but if I go do extra save more, I will come across as rude even if I don't intend to be. Because you just got a resting bitch face. I got resting bitch face. I got resting. Yeah, I got resting bitch face. Try to get home. I just, I just don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to get in and get out without talking to people. Yeah, that's I mean, like, like a that's, celebrity. That's most people. It's not like that. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> I, I'm Paul Myers. I'm a celebrity in Exeter, and everybody bothers the fuck out of me when I'm just trying to go about my personal business. I would say that it's not like a celebrity because nobody's just saying, like, I want to take a picture with you. They, it's also, like, criticism where they're like, you know what you need to cover in the paper? If they, you know what you yeah, need to do? The suggestion, And then all of a sudden you're just like, uh, once again, not working. I'm not even wearing the shirt this time. And, like, you think that I don't, I don't know what I'm doing of but my do you, own organization. Do you, say that? do you say that? No, I say, you know what would be really helpful is if you text me that. Uh, so that way I have it, or maybe you can email me that. So, so that lie. way I have it in my inbox. You lie. Well, no, I know they don't have my my email or my phone you number. You lie. So then I just say like, hey, no, it. it I will, I will take it into consideration if they go through those means. Like you, you have to set up the, what do you call them? They're not borders. Barriers. Not even barriers. Safeguards. I don't remember. It's, it's Condoms. Been a long Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll say barriers. That's fine. Boundaries. You got to set up like the boundaries. Oh, like same thing. Yeah, yeah but that's Different not like, that's not the word. Yeah. It's not the word I wanted to use. I wanted to use that one. So what about uh? I gotta pee. We can take a break. Me and Landon can talk for a second. We'll talk shit good. about you. Yep. Well, yeah, definitely record that one. Right. Play it back. <laughs> They're outside if you want. Yeah, yeah, just go right out the back door. So this was Hot Pieros. This is the third beer we had. That's our uh, first bathroom break. Are we are we still recording? We paused. No. We are. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, this would be a good plan to fill up. I like Paul. Side note about Paul: he doesn't shut up. Imagine him at the tavern with an endless supply of beer. Uh, no, I've been there. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real, he has some real deep uh, conversations with him. Had a few. Which actually, I've met him over at the, excuse me, at the at the paper in the evening, you know, and he's like wrapping things up. And I've sat over there with him, had brought him a couple beers and talk about things. Kind of on different ends of the spectrum when it comes politically. Oh, no, exactly. I feel that way, too. But, hey, to each their own. We're in America. That's what we got to live with. Uh, exactly. I mean, I don't disagree with everything. Well, yeah, by, no. by all means. Actually, there's. I think we agree more than we disagree, mm-hmm. you know, which is actually the cool part. And I like him. Like I said, I really actually enjoy talking to him a lot. He, t- he can take a joke. Yes. That's the best part. That, yeah. People like that are, that's what you want. You don't want some yeah. fucking prude that's going to take it up the ass the whole yeah. entire time. Be be too prissy and, you know, get your feelings hurt about shit. It's like that's, talking shit's part of it, you know, having a little bit of thick skin actually makes it kind of nice. Shh, he's back. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was trying to drink my beer. So and I was trying to the dog drinks beer. <laughs> so if you were... Peeing near the dog, it probably smelled the beer. All right, what's the next question? Um, well, actually, what? I think we've gone over relationships decently, we, so we, we can uh, talk about a little bit of the health aspect. I know uh, you still working out with Powell? Yes. And those guys still getting your exercise on? I was I was just talking about that with a friend of mine. I said, uh, because yeah, I, mean, I wake up at five thirty. And I'm not a morning person in the slightest. Then why wake up at 5:30? Because I actually enjoy working out with Mike and like the and, and peoples and you got your group. Yeah, and yeah. I'm just like if had it like I I would I hate to say that I'm one of those people that like need to be held accountable. Yeah. But I'm one of those people that need to be held accountable because otherwise I'll just be like, now nah, I'm sleeping in." It's a support group, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it works. That's cool. It not only does it, like it's also it's also just like a really fun, like there's story time. 
Yeah. Like where we just like talk shit about whatever. And like without, like it's probably one of the few times in my day where like I say shit without complete shame. <laughs> <laughs> it's like real locker room talk. Yeah. It, it is like, I can say some of the worst shit like I've ever said to these, to these people. And they're just like, get it, bro. I you fucking know, understand. You know what's funny is that me, me and Janie were actually talking about that the other day. Cause what are we drinking on this one? Uh, this is the Illa Vanilla. I'm full it's circle. Full circle. Fresno. It's little right. plug. I have a show on August 7th. You should come out. You can finally see. August 7th? Yeah. Man, you gave me ample time. Yep. Two yep. months to prepare. And no reason books. for you to not be there. It's a yeah. stand-up comedy? No, a metal show. Take Just, your shirt off and get in the pit for me. That's should, all I, I ask. Okay, okay. Whoa. Cloud whoa. Whoa. Those days are behind me, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Slam it, Illa Vanilla. I will be the like. Hit I'm it. a glow stick in the dark. That's like, perfect. How, <laughs> That's all we want. I can be the beacon of hope in the. I don't pit. know. I don't know if you've seen the people that like metal. <laughs> I wish. How are you not? How are you not whiter? Like huh? you, like red hair, freckles. He has a, he has like, a day job that. Is how are you on the just field. not? How are you not whiter? I think it's the Indian blood. Uh, is it? I think you, so. you injected into your veins. No, we've all we've tanned very well. All of us. God dang. But no, we're it's native. We're, hey, remember how we always talk about telling people we're Native American? They mm-hmm. never fucking believe it. Right. Should have gone to college. We're Native American. And, and we plenty don't of scholarships. Now you sound like fucking Lucas. <laughs> plenty of scholarships <laughs> available. No. No, not, not far in a quarter, Indian. Yeah. Oh, you, damn you it. Sorry, guys. Res, bro. You don't get to just check brother, the box. Isn't your brother a lawyer? He's going no. to law school? He went to fucking school. Doesn't make him a lawyer. Well, I didn't <laughs> pass <the fucking> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He didn't pass, he didn't pass I mean, you're right. Bar. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Did he not pass the bar? He never took it. He oh. went to. He oh. went. He took law classes. I'm a fucking ordained minister. All right. <laughs> Which is way more official than he is a fucking lawyer. I'm. I had, I'm, I'm much closer <laughs> to having a church than he is to having a practice. <laughs> That was pretty good. I've taken the honestly literal, that, that was the most truthful thing you've said I've so far. I've taken the literal <laughs> steps towards having a flock. Having a flock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the question? I'm sorry. Your physical and mental health. Yeah, oh, well, that's what we're talking about. The, the how do you stay? How do I stay fit? How do you stay? Well, I'm, well, because I'm not. So uh, <laughs> real easy. <laughs> I, I don't. There's a balance of things. You work out. I work out. You work out. Try to take care of yourself I physically. Actually, and I actually enjoy. I was trying, and the reason why I was talking about this to a friend of mine, like just before I came over, is because he's trying to find the motivation to like work out regularly. And I'm telling him, I'm just like, sometimes, most times, you don't want to do it, so it's just about fucking doing it, and right. that's all that there is. Like you, and then one day, hopefully, you'll enjoy something about it, and that's the reason why you'll go. Or why you'll keep going. Yeah. So, right? so, yeah. And like, but like those days, it's like, this is what I do. 530, alarm goes off. Light is, I mean, during the winter is the toughest. Oh, yeah. Because it's cold mm-hmm. and like the only warm thing is your bed and you don't want to leave. Right. right. Um, but like this time of year. Well, 530 in the summer is like. Easy. It, it, yeah. It's it's 64 degrees. Actually, You're like, oh, thank God. So right. much better. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, anyways, right now, like there's barely like light, like peeking through the blinds or whatever. And like I, <laughs> so I sleep shirt on, uh, underwear. That's it. Right. That was, that so, was, we appreciate you letting us know. You guys all, everybody needs to know. So, anyways, <laughs> like alarm goes off, turn it off, swing my legs Sleep over, on my back, my dick to the left. <laughs> <laughs> it's always to the left, and then, but like you swing your legs over, and then like I have my clothes like on the floor, like ready to just like put on. Oh, so like, like you, wake it has up, to be you... the first thing I do. Oh, or is it like because you wake up basically the latest as possible no. that you can? So it's like I, I, gotta I can't go. do that. Like, me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I do that a lot. I, I not, not to work out. Like I need to be like awake. Yeah, but like yeah, I have to like put on the gym clothes the first thing I do before I stand up, or I won't go. Right, like that's the way. That's that's knowing yourself and then adjusting accordingly. Yeah, and so like that's the first thing I do: make coffee, and then like I watch an episode of The Simpsons, the and then perfect I leave. Pre workout, coffee, a hundred percent. Perfect pre workout. You don't need that fucking C four bullshit. You don't need any of that. Just fucking black coffee. Well, that's not the and put some creamer in it. I don't give a shit. It's best. 
I, our, our president at the Lions Club would beg to differ. Yeah, well, he's a big dum dum. Black coffee is the best fucking pre workout. You guys part of the Exeter Lions Club? No, my one of my best friends is the president. Oh, okay. <laughs> also, he's like a triathlete. He's twenty five years old. He's my age, but looks like he's in f- fucking forty year old. He looks older than both of you guys. And it's only that's, cause that's of good the, to hear. It's because of the hair. <laughs> No, he's it's because of all the C4 and pre-workout he does. Seriously. Yeah. But he does. But the point is, like, well, and I love the guy, too. But it's like, dude, you do fucking, like, a ton of cardio shit. Why the fuck are you taking pre-workout? Right. Like, that's the dumbest thing to ever do. The only reason you should be taking pre-workout is if you're going to go lift heavy weights and that's all you're going to do, fucking three reps and fucking rest for fucking yeah. five minutes. Mm-hmm. That's when you should because you need to get your heart rate up. Fucking pedaling a bike. You don't need to fucking get the heart rate up, dum dum. If you're gonna do like, you know, four sets of ten reps on, you know, of pull ups, mm-hmm. no need for pre workout. No, it's not required. Do fucking three pull ups. You're probably actually okay. I also feel gr- like I, I hate the like bang like C four like because yeah. w- like eventually I'll burp because it's so carbonated. Yeah. Where I'm like, I taste it and then I feel great. And now I feel mm-hmm. sick. So like, I don't like that either. I had to stop taking them. They just made me jittery. I yeah. lived on rock stars and shit for the longest time at work just for working so late and stuff like that. And like fucking uh, five hour energies, dumb as shit. And oh, that's, that's 100%. A, that's a just, it, it fucks you up. It's not good for you. Yeah. It, in fact, my driver, he's the one that does the, uh, he delivers the papers on Tuesday nights. He was using. He was experimenting with five-hour energy. Tell me, needs to pick him up from Save Mart, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, and uh, he was telling me he was like using five-hour energy, and he was just like, it didn't help me be more awake, but my body felt jittery. Yeah, that and doesn't... I was like, oh, I get it. That's why they're awful. That's like a Jolt Cola. Remember when they used to have that shit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the what was the green one? Surge. Surge. Mm-hmm. Just fucking Burger shrink. King has Surge. Oh, Sur- I don't know. Do I don't think it's legit. I don't it's, think it's the legit it's one. It's not the old school. Where it was like twice the caffeine. Yeah. That was what it was. It wasn't that it was sugar. Every, every drink has its, I mean, like Surge, Four Loco. Like, don't, can't find mm, that anymore. Sparks. No, you can get Sparks. Four Loco. Four Loco. Not the old Four Loco, I though. I buy it. Not the one where, like, you'd black out after, like, one can. The one yeah. you could put in a jet engine and it fucking <laughs> runs. <laughs> I don't know. I've never had four loco to be honest with they're you. They're not good. So there was. I, I know they're not. I mean, <laughs> I would assume because there's plenty of things that I've had before that are no longer on the market. I, I had like, four they loco. Were cheap, yeah, and they fuck you up. They taste really good. It's like Kool Aid. It tastes so good. That's nah, not good. But like I was, uh, yeah, I blacked out like that's wholeheartedly. Everyone, that's everyone's story on four loco. Yeah, that's why they stopped selling it. No, no, they still. Well, have they, no, they augmented the. the they like, took out the, they, the they caffeine. Took, yeah. Oh, that's what it was. It was an energy drink with alcohol. It was like yeah. sparks. Yeah. yeah. That's like the dumbest combination. It's so bad. Mm-hmm. It's Upper so and a down. Yeah. Same time. <laughs> Here's a speedball in a can. But like, I do enjoy like I I enjoy working out. I enjoy moving my body so that way I can like have more flexibility and stretch and not feel like shit when I wake up in the morning. Right. Uh, the thing is I don't do enough of it. How often do you work out? I work out probably, I work out once a day. I mean, oh, I won't so work like every, every, every morning. morning, Monday through Friday. Yeah. Monday through time. Friday. Sorry. And that's then still not, pretty good. Yeah. I mean, no, good. that's really good. Five I mean, days a week. Yeah. That's, that's for like an hour. Yeah, that's yeah. still good. Though. Yeah. No, the, the, the biggest problem I Listen, have that is, is already food. a ton more than most people. <laughs> it, but, but it's not, and this is what I try to tell you. It's like, if you want to lose weight, most of it's going to be in the kitchen. Yeah. Like, it's important for you to work out. You have to do that. Uh, You want to know where else it's at? Uh, Right right here. here. Yeah. (laughs) I decided that I'm, I, I is, I enjoy working out, but like the days of getting six pack abs are probably behind me. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm very close to 33. And so what's the point? Habits. Habits. Oh, habits. It was. Oh, habits. So habits, I need better. I need better habits. But this was also the other deal with it where it was like, like that, like drinking, right? You're a beer guy. This you is, enjoy you enjoy beer, right? Yeah. So it's that balance of it. You exercise five days a week, which I'll tell you right now, that's two more days than I do on a standard as far as like getting into the gym side. You're of probably things. more intense in your workouts than I am. Because just I'm you, less, right? I'm less. Yeah, I'm less yeah. than I was. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I'm I'm less than I used to be mm-hmm. because that that high impact shit, like you know, CrossFit style shit, just fucking that, wear down on me after yeah. a while. But also, so like. The habit side of it, like you're saying, it's it's perfect. Like, 
you exercising is to make yourself feel better because you know like flexibility your joint your mobility all those things right they add up especially as you get a little bit older so staying on top of those things are are very important but at the same time enjoying your life to to an extent you know indulging in alcohol indulging in good food greasy food you yeah, know yeah, something yeah. yeah i mean not not just living buttery on it food you not, know, you know yeah. but like trying to watch it but also not completely removing it from yourself and like mm-hmm. trying to trying to find a, like a nice little balance of that you know so like this is the way that i justify eating bad food you shouldn't have to justify it no 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 because <laughs> if i don't justify it i'll eat it every day right and I, and i'll tell myself i worked out today even yeah. though that's just like complete horseshit so like I worked out for an hour. Yeah, I worked out for an hour today. I deserve two thousand calories of grease. Like that's clearly ridiculous. Everything's based on a two thousand cal- two thousand calories. Yeah, but that's not the only thing I'm eating every day. I know, right? And so like, so if I am gonna eat out, I want it to be stuff that I really like. Right. Like I don't really like McDonald's. I don't really like Taco Bell. I really like In and Out. In and Out's delicious. Really, that's not really. That bad? No, what? Yeah, no, it's not. Like if you were to actually look at it, nutritional fact wise, and oh, the fries actually, are definitely like you know far better for you. Well, it ranks much higher. I mean, mm-hmm. probably the worst part is the cheese, to be honest with you, yeah. and then the bread. But but like stuff like that, their like, quality. But I don't even mean like just like fast food. I mean, like if I'm gonna eat fast food, it's gonna be something that I really respect. Like the bad like part is I would eat In and Out every fucking day. Yeah, me too. If like, I could, yeah, yeah. And but like I also mean like if I want to like if I'm gonna have a steak. Like I'm going to have a steak. Like right. I'm going to get the New York trim with the nice marbling and I'm going to like put the butter in the pan with the rosemary and the thyme and the garlic. And I'm going to like do it up like and the mashed yeah. potatoes. Oh, filled with cream, salt, potato, so cream, that, pepper. Yeah. Like not just a cheat day, like a cheat. No, I'm going to make it a gourmet meal. Right. Like, but that's what I mean is like at, even then in that kind of food, like it's not processed. Right. Like if you're going to, if you're going to go through the work of mashing the potatoes and peeling the potatoes and actually cooking your own like steak and then like, you know, having asparagus or some sort of like vegetable, like, is that a huge calorie meal? Yeah. Like that's probably double the amount of protein or a triple the amount of protein you should probably have in a meal. But after work. So what? I mean, yeah. Who cares about the workout? Well, to a certain point, that's the deal is that you could overdo the protein. There's, X amount that's going to benefit you. And then the rest of it's like just a little extra. Like it's literally that South Park episode where Cartman's like, (laughs) he's he's drinking all those shakes and it's like, he ain't doing shit. So all it's doing is taking that protein. It now becomes fat. Yeah. Like like it gets processed difference at a certain point. You can only consume so much. Mm -hmm. So, So all that to say is like what it helped me do was actually put food in like a hierarchy in which I was willing to like indulge. So like, you know, I don't really like McDonald's. Like I said, like it's very low on the hierarchy. Like not only is it shitty food, it's, but it is convenient. So right. like if I don't have, if I don't prepare lunch that day, like McDonald's is probably on the menu. Right. Like I don't want to do that. Like, so if I'm going to eat bad, I want it to be good. Mm-hmm. Like I want it to be good food, even though it's bad for me. And McDonald's, it doesn't feel, it doesn't fit. It's that also, bad. it's also, I'm sure it's the same for you. Like it, it changes the older you get. Yeah, like oh, your yeah. your taste, your the way the food fucking affects you. Ugh. I'm at that age where it's starting to all click. At yeah, that. you're really gonna start seeing it like in the late twenties. Mm-hmm. Like and uh-huh. that's you're starting to push into that. That's where. <laughs> well, like, like I think I became lactose intolerant. <laughs> you lost your tolerance for milk. <laughs> yeah, like I used to like a bowl of cereal a day. Maybe I just fucking oh, gave no. myself the fucking allergy. I don't know. Two <laughs> percent milk weighs heavy on me now. Yeah. All of a sudden. 2%? Yeah, 2% milk, not even whole. Uh, I don't know. Fuck with that shit. Yeah, whole milk or nothing. (laughs) Yeah. The, yeah. Fucking around. That, that, no, you're like, I was thinking about it the other day and I was like, I'm trying to live my life and habits like it's an orchestra. Because, (laughs) like, I'm trying to be like extremely well intentioned because I can tell the difference between whenever, like, I time out when I eat Mm -hmm. and what I eat. And then, like, versus Mondays when, like, because, like, sun, Saturday and Sunday is no holds barred. Yeah. Like, it is what it is. There's no rules because, yeah. like, not working. Yeah, right. And, yeah, this I'm way off time. my routine. You're like you're like a like a 21-year-old girl on your <laughs> birthday week. It's me time. And, you know, between us guys and 
clearly anybody listening to this microphone. Five people. Like I could, <laughs> yeah, and all five folks out there. I can tell the difference between my shits on a weekday and on Monday. <laughs> like Monday, there are shits after coming off of like a two day binger of beer and Twinkies and fast food. Yeah. Whereas like Tuesday, Tuesday through Friday, it's just the, you know, good protein, you know, apples, you know, nuts, you know, fruits and vegetables. Nice one solid log. Of oh yeah. It's fucking diary. Yeah, you, <laughs> you sit down and you're just like, you wipe nothing there, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, like all day, all day Monday, you're just hoping for like, uh, can I trust this part? I just want it to end. <laughs> can I trust this part? Uh. Then it's like Tuesday. Yes, finally a solid mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, like it, it, you, it's, you're in and out like five minutes. You know, I, I feel on, on like Tuesday. that's like paying the price for your youth at, at some points because mm-hmm. it's like I didn't fucking deal with that shit when I was like in my fucking late teens, my twenties. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Hangovers, have, hangovers didn't fucking linger. I remember if I had a hangover, I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? I didn't have diarrhea shits I from have, drinking the night before. I could have two fucking thing. beers and feel like shit the next day and be like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. And it's just like my body's like, fuck you, stupid. <laughs> but that's, that, what happened during the pandemic is I got, I like, I fu- the world finally slowed down to a point where I could establish a routine. And now that, like, I've done that. I, I change from that routine like tonight. Like it's definitely a change from the routine. Right. Like I go to bed at like nine thirty, mm-hmm. like ten o'clock. Oh, we keeping you up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I don't mind. Like I I planned for this, mm-hmm. but yeah. like it's definitely outside of the like intention. So tomorrow's workout's going to be yeah, a so, little. Oh, I'm not even working out tomorrow. Like I ch- <laughs> I'm just like I'm sleeping in tomorrow, and I will I will go into work whenever I want. Uh, uh, but like this is. It's hard. It's hard to live an intentional lifestyle. But the pandemic was one of the best things that ever happened to me, Seriously. lifestyle wise. Seriously, that that was like a pull. I made like a, a lot full, of life changes. Full ratchet back. Like it. There's parts of it that I kind of miss. Not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, think I started back to like this time last year, and I'm like, what was I doing? I started taking like mental health seriously. And it, like during the pandemic, that mm-hmm. wasn't something that I ever cared about before. That was something I was gonna ask you. It was like, how did how did your mental health compared to this time last year during the, the beginning of the pandemic to the end. I would say that it's a little like the, the profile of that answer is a little incomplete. Like I don't really know exactly where I stand mental health wise. Um, like I feel pretty stable. I but. think, I think <laughs> here, here's, here's the thing. I think most people, even whether they're seeking any kind of help on it or not, are probably in that realm. And even with those of us that are, Like it, there's still like, that's, it's a work in progress, regardless, no matter what way you're looking at it. There's no way that it's actually going to be 100. Yeah. It's never going to be 100. Life (laughs) is never 100. No. No. And and it's also, and if you're looking at it realistically and logically, it's going to evolve. Yeah. yeah, I mean, your, your thoughts and your feelings on something could absolutely change tomorrow. If you're willing to you know, not, not that set your heels in the sand on, on, right. on anything in particular, you know? I mean, it's like, even like we're saying pro choice, I don't know something may be brought up tomorrow that I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'm not, maybe, you know, but I, I mean, realistically, I'm just saying as it, probably a poor example, but no, I mean, keeping an open mind. I, I, I mean, to, to your point, Courtney started. So whenever Courtney and I were first started living together, probably within like the first six months. So we'd been together for almost a year. She started going to a therapist, like a school therapist. She was still going in. She was at Fresno State, so the mm-hmm. service was free. Hey. That's and, right. yeah, I mean, well, the, the people going through the program need clients, and, you know, they're everywhere on campus, so you know, uh, it's, it's an open call. <laughs> like, hopefully it's good advice. Yeah, right. <laughs> she found she happened to find, like, a really good one, which I – I tend to agree with you. I was like, what the fuck does this person know? They're yeah, still right. a student. <laughs> well, but that's how a lot of people approach, you know, right. therapy. therapy anyways. It's uh-huh. like, what the fuck does this person yeah, know? Yeah, right. And so she started going and then like, she like really started to come to like with terms of things that she had been like, same like anybody else who goes yeah. to therapy. Like, you know, I, I'm good here. And then somebody says like, are you good there? Cause that sounds fucked up. Like right. it, therapists don't say that, but like, that's kind of like what happens <laughs> in their, their notes. Are <laughs> yeah. They're, yeah. They're scribbling <laughs> they're, a lot. They're, and they're just, just like, like hmm. psychopath. <laughs> and so then she was, so she did what like any natural, 
you know, growing minded person does like, you know what you should do? You should go to therapy. Like, doesn't that sound great? Like it's working great for me. Mm-hmm. And I fucking lost my shit. <laughs> but was she? But here's the deal: was she being actually kind of nice about it, or was she like, "You need it," or was she was like, "Hey, it, look, it's done great for me. I think it would benefit you." So that would have been a for for someone like me who's as bullheaded and like you know s- stubborn mm. as I am. You don't that probably say. would. Yeah, I don't know if you know this about me. <laughs> <laughs> but I tend to be pretty stubborn. And had she approached me with that, I'd been like, "Oh, maybe," and I would just probably would have just like you know whatever. Uh, instead, she was just like, you know what you need to do? Cause it was always like after like a fight, it you know, sound like you're being defensive. Yeah. And I was being defensive because but it was also after a fight. So <laughs> because it was, yeah. That but, probably wasn't the best thing for her to throw at you. Either. She, yeah. I mean, she did. <laughs> I feel like she had this power and, and it is like going to therapy, like gives you a bit of a, gives you power because it gives you ownership over your own mind that you didn't have before. Right. And I understand that now. But like she, but the way you exercise that, like you do need to be careful with yeah, because absolutely. not everybody's ready to hear it. Absolutely. And she didn't understand that. And like, even me right now, like I've probably overstepped the bounds of some of my relationships where I shouldn't have. And I feel kind of bad about it, but sure. No, I, I, I feel like I've kind of done the same where like in the middle of conversation where I'm like, That's I got, I got, I got to pull back from that a little bit. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm pressing a little too hard or I think, you know, I've crossed, I've crossed a little bit of a boundary. Yeah. You see it after the fact, but yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it, it's hard not to, because you know, there's, there's a lot of excitement when you feel like you've had, I guess what is called a breakthrough, right? Or yeah, you, some progress. Yeah. Like you, you're like, man, I'm feeling good about this now. And then, you know, you, you try to put those things into practice. You try to, to live those things a little bit, or you try to, you, you know, even just sit with them a little bit in your head where you're like, okay, I've been shown this about how I handle these situations then all of a sudden you're presented with somebody that's doing that and you're like oh i recognize this like <laughs> but your head's doing that and you're like whoa yeah. whoa whoa we're not we're not a doctor shut up yeah you know? and you're like no i can help him let me tell him <laughs> no, no no no. i've done this i've been there like yeah. I'll, I'll i can do this for this them. is great look it i'm gonna show you <laughs> and then like i fuck it up completely yeah and like say it completely backwards <laughs> right. everybody's just like what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> i'm like no you just need help bro so Courtney, Courtney told me, she's like, you, you should go to therapy and, or you should like get like a counselor, whatever the, whatever the terminology was. And I just fought her. I was just like, there is the same bullshit as everybody else's. There's nothing wrong with me. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah. What, what are you trying to fix? You know, so on and so forth. And it really wasn't until like Landon openly said like, oh yeah. Like I started, it's like, oh yeah, I, I go to see a therapist. And I, and when he said it, it was kind of the nonchalant. It was super of it nonchalant. Too. I'm just like, like he just, like he just said it. And I was just like, he said it so confidently and so calmly. And I was just like, shut the fuck up, bro. <laughs> like, hey, 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 nobody needs to hear that shit. Like, <laughs> it made, <laughs> like it made me uncomfortable that he said it. And like, I just still, and even, even then I didn't think anything of it. And like he, and he was talking about it. And it was just, and I had, I had considered it, but I had never, I never had like the balls to actually do it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and he, and honestly, like Landon put in very specific terms where he's just like, you work out your muscles because you want to make them stronger. Like you work out your mind because this is the workout to Keep work out sharp. your mind. <laughs> like, right. Sharp and on point and everything. And, and then I, and I really think that like, once he said that, that was like the key in my mind to be like, do I really know what's going on up here? Cause like, there's a lot that I can, there's a lot of little things that I know, like probably like all of us, but like, do I know like what makes me tick? Right. And I was like, I don't think I, I really don't think. And the more you ask yourself that question, you're like, I don't think I do. Mm-hmm. I don't think I know what's going on up here. It's that, um, that cliche of the onion, you know, like you just start peeling the layers back, you yeah. know, like there's, there's things under things, you know, like the way you react to a certain situation could be because of something that. You're like, what the fuck? How is that connected? But yeah. then when you you have help and some guidance to to show you how those things are intertwined and you know how your how your psyche and your subconscious you know kind of work with and against you at different points, you know, it's it's very interesting. But yeah, it's absolutely it it's that thing like a like I had told you, you know, like the exercise thing, exercise and nutrition, right? It's yeah. those are the things. So it's like. Nutrition is for your body. 
exercises for your body. These other things are for your, you know, and therapies for your mind, you know, yeah. meditation. There's all kinds of different things like that. So, you know, I, I do therapy. You, you do therapy, you know, um, having, like we've talked about it, having, having good friends, family, other people that you can have like really open, honest conversations with tend to help, you know, stuff that's not really biased, you know, so you don't, you don't need a rah, rah, man. You don't need right. somebody that's like, no, you're right. You know, like you need somebody I, that's, gonna, I don't need that. Right. You need no, nobody <laughs> does. I need somebody to say like, no, you're fucking wrong. Like exactly. you should fuck right. up right now. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I feel like I have, I have my brothers. We have a very good relationship, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, between the four of us. I have some really good friends that I can lean on with stuff like that, that I know that are going to be honest with me. You're one of them that I, I know you're going to be honest with me when I bring I, something up. I don't know what else to do. And to a certain point, <laughs> really fucking honest to where <laughs> I want to fucking slap you one, but that's just part of it. And that's, but that, that you the, chose to be friends with me. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> I have not made that decision yet. Oh, well <laughs> still in the air. This is, well, still we are out. on the casting couch. It doesn't mean we're friends, After, bro. Well, I don't know. I feel like People I'm got to audi- be friends. The it cast just, together. I know, but is yeah. Is this the audition? This, just is this the talent, this buddy. <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> we won't be friends after tell you that. But yeah, no. I, that, I mean, I think it's great. I, I think it's cool. It's one and and uh, yeah. I mean, I remember having that conversation with you too. Well, first of all, it started at the tavern. It did start. At the is tavern. where we were talking about it, and then we've we've carried on with it and everything, and it's. You know, I've, it, it was, it was one of those deals. Cause I'll be honest with you too. That was one of the first moments that I had first times that I had been open with somebody outside of like my family mm-hmm. that, you know, like, Oh no, I go to therapy. Like that was kind of a big step for me to say that too. Oh, at that the same time. Could have fooled me, I mean? man. To some, not in a bad way, but a random stranger in a sense to say that out loud. It was a big, yeah, big move for you. Right. Mm-hmm. To, to just openly say it. Well, and it, yeah. And it's like mm-hmm. to, to somebody that I'm but friends. You, I'm, right. I'm, yeah. We're, we're friends. friends. We, we, we can talk. Mm-hmm. We certainly didn't that, have to say it. That was <laughs> definitely a deeper thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, so here's the other thing. I actually have a handful of other friends that don't know. Right. I have a lot of like very close friends that don't, they, they would only know if they're watching these things mm-hmm. because this is where I've been. I don't hide. I also don't hide it from them, but I don't just like. Address hey, it. go to therapy. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> it's not one of those things either. No, you know, like you don't you don't do that in therapy. No, no. But it's like when it when it comes up or I find my in, and it was a conversation that we were having. Mm-hmm. You know, where I was like, you know, it because it was literally about the fact that I was like, no, I go. You know, and I remember it started because I I I had said I was like, oh, well, I just got like engaged. Yes. And I yes. don't exactly remember what led to like the therapy conversation that to the topic. I think we were just talking about a handful of things. We were things. just talking about life. It was more of a, life. He, had, he had a general question about marriage. Right. Which was where it kind of started. And then we kind of, you know, weaved into yeah. where we did. But, you know, long story short, the cool part is, is that, you know, that's one of, the, it's like a little, I guess you can call it a victory for myself too in that, that. I inspired or steered somebody in that direction. hundred percent. You gave like you and I have grown up when we grew up in the same town, we went to the same high school. Like mm-hmm. we've lived roughly similar lives. You are way more wealthy than I, than I am at this point. And that's <laughs> nice for you. And, and so really, cause like when you had said it, I was just like, did he realize that he just said this? Because like, we probably have, very similar family backgrounds Mm -hmm. where like the patriarch of the family is just like, you gotta be tough. You gotta be mean. Mm -hmm. Like you gotta like you like feelings. Nobody has time for that shit. You know, that kind of stuff. Right. Because that's just the way that that generation grew up. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like, obviously that's the way we grew up. Right. Because parents aren't perfect and that's just the way that it is. And so like, I have always carried with me the, uh, you know, like, well, nobody has time for feelings. Like, men only have time for action. Right. You know, men only have time for doing bold things. And, like, who cares how you feel? And then you start realizing, and this is something that I've realized over over the last year, 
I was like, oh, well, interpersonal relationships count for a lot. <laughs> and uh, I mean, a whole hell of a lot. Right. Like how you, like, honestly, how you judge your self-worth is probably somewhere in these interpersonal relationships. Yeah, right. And so, like, you should probably learn how to take care of those in some way and what you're providing and how you're interpreting them and I mean, all of these things. They just become empty, you know? Yeah. They, I mean, they're, they're again, the, they're not genuine. Yeah. And, and so to finish my thought, though, I like the fact that you said it gave me strength to say, like, oh, I can do that. Right. Like, because I because if he can do it and he grew up the same way that I did, I can I can do this. Right. Like, makes sense. I was like, and if he got something out of it, I'll probably get something out of it, too. Right. Shine that stigma of, of it away, you know, where it's like, man, you know, I mean, because it's easy. It's easy to say that, you know, that it's like, you know, I don't have a problem or. It's lazy. Yeah. It's lazy to say that. Yeah. I, well, and, and it you know, is. It's, it's, it's defensiveness. It's, you know, it, it is a cop out. And maybe because there is some real, there might be some real fear in there about what you might pull out. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, and, I, yeah. and I think we all kind of deal with that kind of stuff. It's like, you know, one of the, the things that I've really been going over now is like these, is your shadows, right? We Nobody really wants to address the dark sides. You know, the dark pieces, those things that kind of linger in there. Stuff in the closet. Yeah. Scary, man. You, you, that's well, scary shit. And that's the thing, because it can be very deep, and it can be it can be very hard to address some of these things. But when you start making, and you don't do it like just fucking jumping, right? Like, you don't you don't just make this this huge leap. Like, you you take these steps, mm-hmm. you know? And it, it's like, like I said, it's like, a, like an onion. You kind of peel it back a little bit, and, it, and that's what I found. It's just having these these conversations, and I got lucky, you know, with the therapist that I had found. I, I literally threw a dart, like when I I found her, and it, and it just happened to be the right format for her her way of doing things, how she she approaches it, works for me, and I every time, even when like you know I I do it once a month now, and you know kind of it'll vary between schedules and stuff. Like if I feel like I need to go a little bit more or not, whatever. Once a month is good, but. It's like I'll be like, man, I don't, I don't know if I have anything, you know. Like I know, I, I'll know like the week of, like, I got an appointment this week, you know, and like it's on my mind, and I'm always like, it, when I get it, yeah, when I get a breath, uh, you know, to to think outside of work and everything else, I'm like, yeah, man, what am I gonna bring up? What mm-hmm. am I gonna talk about? Then I get in there, and it's like I just start talking, find it, yeah, you know, and that like that's such the. The coolest part to me is that having this person that's like a shaman that's kind of like directing <laughs> me down this road and helping me pull these things out. You know what I mean? It's the coyote from Simpsons. Uh, oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. Yes. It's my spirit guide. <laughs> yeah. 100%. 100%. She's my coyote. <laughs> and I kick the stupid turtle. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But I'm, um, no, I, I think it's great, man. I think it's awesome that you. That you've done that, I think that, and and it's it's the cliche thing too of like yeah. where I get to throw that out there to you, and like there's going to be a moment where you're probably going to inspire somebody or say something to somebody too that uh, may turn them. You know, I got to the point where like I don't have a problem. I mean, not, not that I've ever. I, I like to be the guy that like marches to my own drum. Right. Not. I don't even necessarily think it's on purpose. I think it's just because I strive to be noticed you're a ginger am as if it as if being noticed is difficult already <laughs> <laughs> but like you know and it's one of those things like through therapy that i realized like no it's like i'm striving to be noticed because i wasn't before growing up because i was the last child mm-hmm. everything that i did that was novel to me wasn't novel to everybody else first steps don't count as much you know, being able to eat solid foods don't count as much. Like, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like, it's as just. As a parent, it does. Well, Because once you get caught tell. up to everybody else, <laughs> there's fucking less having to worry about the baby. Yeah. As soon as you stop shitting in a diaper and having to feed off a bottle and you can feed yourself as a parent, it's golden. Yeah, thank golden. God. <laughs> you know, yeah, but, but no, like, but you're right. Because the first but, one but is you don't like, note, but yeah. you, broke all, you broke all the, and the just, bottles on the first oh, one. You yeah, christened oh my, it. Oh, my God. Like, oh, those first steps. And everybody, like, cheers. And, like, you can do no wrong. And then, like, you take your first steps. You're just like, thank God. It's about fucking time, would you? You're talking to the room right <laughs> here. Yeah, I mean, the oldest and the youngest. Yeah, so, so, so like, 
a part of, like and which I feel is bullshit. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> I feel like the baby. You have an inflated sense of self. I, the I hate baby to tell you got that. everything he fucking wanted. <laughs> no, I look, that's I look not around, true. I look around mom's house, and there are more pictures than you than me. And there's a lot of the trip. Like, have you, you looked Luke? at her phone? Um, well, because I'm a fucking Every, rock star now. Everything's so there's, digital. There's <laughs> photos. There's such a gap here. Everything went digital by the time you was in it. <laughs> well, even before when I was a baby, there's no baby pictures of me hanging up a pose of you uh, the, the of the three. Oh. Right? Everything's I mean, all in triplet pairs on photos at the house. And that tracks, right? Mm -hmm. Because like the... And I went off on mom about this already. Good for Ooh. you. <laughs> Way to confront the chefs. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, but like that's the thing because like the friends that I have who have like two or more kids are like oh first kid you're just like handle them with kid gloves oh, you yeah. know you're just like don't die and then like the second kid you're just like they're resilient as shit like who cares and then and the so like one by sure. the third one you have so much <laughs> confidence as a parent you're just like you can't kill these things even if you fucking tried you're to you're like look <laughs> yeah. don't so, kick the baby kick now, the baby kick the baby <laughs> now as the youngest child though like you're looking at it from that perspective you're just uh, so i guess nothing i do fucking matters exactly because nobody seems to give a shit and so like being the youngest myself is like everything i need to do needs to be new and it needs to be better and it needs to be big and like, that's the personality I have, lo and behold. Mm -hmm. And that's, and like, that's good and bad at times. It's good in the sense of like, hey, I'm, I'm driven to have high standards. Right. It's bad in the sense of I have high standards. If I don't meet them, I'm a failure. Right. Everything is got to be. Everything's got to be great. Yeah, everything's anything, got to be fantastic anything, because otherwise you don't get noticed. No, yeah. I, I feel anything that below exactly. or, I feel that to an extent. Anything too. lower than those expectations is, is failure. So, so a part of that is like now that I've gone through and I consistently go through a therapeutic process and I go to therapy on, on a relatively regular basis, uh, telling people like, Oh, well, you know, yeah, I learned this in therapy. Like people, by the way, get real fucking squeamish when you yeah. bring up therapy, like people, <laughs> like there's people who are just like, yeah, and like they like get it, and there's other people who are just like, shut the fuck up, I don't want to talk about feelings. <laughs> like, oh, God. please don't bring this up to me. Yeah, <laughs> Reggie's one of those people. <laughs> Name dropping, he won't mind. He's, so, like, <laughs> he's also in the uh, Gen the, Xer. Oh yeah, oh, generation. Yeah. So that's the he, they're the real hardcore. Shove it down. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> that's him. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I, I openly told him, I was just like, oh yeah. Like, well, I, I started seeing like, and I know he wants to, mm. like, I know like the way he looks, he's just like, man, I should like, this sounds great. You know, but like, he can't like, you know, bring himself to do it. And like, and every time, cause every time we talk about it, I mean, like in the newsroom, we talk all the time and you know, eventually these things in like life come up and like, he just like gets his look in his eyes. like, got to make an excuse for why I can't go. And like, and, and, and so I'm instead, washing my hair. Yeah. <laughs> so instead, like him and I, like Tuesday afternoons, like we'll have our therapy set, like him and I, yeah. and like now he doesn't call it. And we don't call it that yeah. or anything, right. but it's no. like an hour in which we just sit down and we talk about shit. It's a forum of it. Yeah. Look, and, I'll be honest. And he that's, knows this that's what, is, that this, this is, is like that is. too. Yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah. 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 It's a, it's a, I mean, just venting, getting shit off your chest, whether you're right or wrong. It's like, that feels good. Well, he and the that conversation could, where you're just not looking for validation, you're just looking for conversation and yeah. to, to get a little bit deeper, you know. And just think complaining about, about things furniture. differently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he can like he's not a it's not even about intelligence, right? Because I used to think I was like I'm smart enough to just get through this, like whatever. It's not about that. I think that's a, a younger perspective too. Yeah, you know, it, what I mean? it, it's it's immature. Yeah, is what it is. And he'll, you know, he, he knows that like there are disconnects in his life and like between me and him or like him and his kids. Mm -hmm. And I know that he knows that because we talk about it. Right. Cause I say like, he, he'll like explain a situation. I was like, I understand that sounds that way to you, but to me it sounds like this. Right. And he, and then that's when I stepped over a line or Yee. two. Cause like, I mean, he is asking, you, be, you try to become the doctor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then like, I'm just like, I don't, which is an uncomfortable position, but I'm just like, I'm just telling you what I think. Like, I don't know. Right. But like, mm -hmm. this is, this is what it sounds like to From me. An outside perspective. Yeah. yeah. And that makes him, I can tell it makes him uncomfortable. 
It, it, it makes a few people, but that that's, that's and it used to make me uncomfortable. So I get it. Well, and the truth is, it's that's the person that's not you necessarily. You know yeah. what I mean? It, and that's what a lot of people don't. It, on a personal level, the thing that's most aggravating to me is watching people react to things that are being said or being done, and not. And, and watching them not realize that the reaction is them. It's not necessarily what the person said or who was saying it. It's, okay, your reaction is you. There's a reason you had that reaction. There's, re- there's a yeah. reason that you act this way when this is said or this is done, you know? It's like that's, that's a little bit deeper than just, I don't like what they said, you know? Mm-hmm. So, but that, that takes a lot of self-reflection and it takes digging deep. Or anger. Things. Yeah, anger is a big one, because a lot of men are just angry. So the biggest they don't know thing, why. the biggest thing, most important thing that I've taken from therapy, and also was about anger, is that anger. It simple, simple statement. Anger is a secondary emotion. Yeah, that is the biggest thing that probably helped me through that was that one phrase being said, and then realizing that no, it's absolutely right. Something caused it, like. I'm not mad because I'm just born mad. I'm not <laughs> angry because I'm just an angry person. No, there is an effect that is causing that. And it may not be, you know, that you called me an asshole. Oh, that makes me angry. Well, it's, yeah, that that might be. But, like, if it takes me to another level, like, there's something else there. It's yeah. not because Paul said this thing right. is why I'm mad. It's why does that thing make me mad? There's... The layers. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is a view of yourself and what you put in, in the way that you view the world. Yeah. That's the, I mean, that's the, that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand is that they're putting themselves into the world. They're reading themselves yeah. into situations. But it's, it's such a different place now too, with like social media and everything else, you know? Oh my of, God. It disconnects you completely. You well, know, and also and, every thought is new. Right. Because it was new to the person who posted it. Yeah. No thought is original. N- None. <laughs> None. Completely. Ne- neither is any feeling or emotion. Mm-hmm. Like, you are not the first person to fucking feel this way right now. <laughs> like, I'm so heartbroken. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you didn't fucking invent this. Well, that's yeah. why if a singer-songwriter writes a song about any type of fucking emotion, someone clicks to it real fast. Yeah. Everyone fucking feels the same yeah. thing in yeah. this life. Yeah. It's, it's, I didn't think it's about that. That's a good, yeah, that's a way of thinking about it. Mm-hmm. It's the connection that's there, you know? I mean, it's the things that you relate to. I mean, I swear to God, I think that people who are trying to, like, make content, either music or, like, videos or otherwise, if they just looked at the parenting trends of the previous generation, they could become instant popular. They could be, become instantly popular. Right. Because then you get, because then you would know what that generation is looking for, what they're missing. Right. And all of a sudden, like, just like that. I think uh, you used to be able to kind of see that in Hollywood a lot. Like, you know, we, <laughs> about the time that it, it was like I was graduating high school, becoming an adult, right? Like, what, 1995 or? No. <laughs> 1990? <laughs> nope. Something like that? Nope. Like fucking 2001, you little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm still in this fucking <laughs> century. So, but like the. It's like the movies that were being made were comic book movies. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, yeah. fuck yeah, they are. Because if I was making fucking movies when I was a kid or at any fucking point, those are the movies I would have fucking made. The films that are on tape at home? Yes. Your Batman tapes? <laughs> They're all Batman. I dressed, my, ba- little, oh, man. I dressed Batman my brothers up like best. Batman. And yeah. I played Batman. <laughs> that was the best. And we did it with the, with the toys and everything. Like, yeah. That, well, that's yeah. G.I. Joe's and shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah an flushing orphan, them down the toilets. An <laughs> orphan kid that, like, grows up to be, like, big and strong and fight crime. Like, yeah. That's, uh, Why not? Like, what, what, else, what else do you want? And he's rich. And he's rich. <laughs> and he's a playboy. It's a, that's mm. a, yeah. And potentially gay, depending on who's writing the DC <laughs> yeah, comics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they get fucking gritty. You know, I mean, if we're going to be honest, the, the, the far, the, the far more likely outcome for Bruce Wayne is to be like a serial killer. Oh, like no. it is not to be. No, Commissioner Gordon was a serial killer. In ga- In Gaslight. Oh, is this? I like, I like the, the thought. The Jack the Ripper one. I like the thought of Batman and Joker being one in the same person. Yeah. Did you watch Justice League? The what? Zack Snyder f- uh, version, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the four-hour one. I did. I got to. It was amazing. I got to Act Two or Three or something. Took like that. A, it you took did? me a couple days. Yeah. Oh, I it's long. It. Yeah, I had like a sa- I had like a whole Saturday night to watch. I just 
plowed through. It was fantastic. I'm Brent Bell over here. I don't have two hours for that shit. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but none Whatever. of the physique of Brent Bell. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. So this is what we're gonna we're gonna end on. How are we gonna we're, we're gonna circle back to it. I'm gonna edit a lot of this shit out. Just so you I know. imagine we're at two hours. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is what we're gonna end on. Robots. Okay. Just because you haven't seen this shit before, but I want to know. I want two questions. One, do you think robots could take over your job? Yes. Okay, good answer. Because I had I had an, a counter if you were going to say no. But anyways, <laughs> all right. So yes, they could absolutely do your fucking job. I didn't mean to say that. Listen, if a monkey, I said they could take over my job. If a nutless monkey with a fucking <laughs> pad and pencil could fucking do your job, a robot sure as fuck can do your job. All you had to say was that if Brent Bell could do my job. It's the same thing. I could do my job. Same thing. Same thing. Basically what I said. (laughs) (laughs) So, okay. So a robot could do your job. A robot could, I mean, like they could take over my job. So does that make you nervous? No. I mean, it makes me nervous, not for myself. Wait, real quick. Does that make you nervous? It does. Okay. That wait. That's good. <laughs> that's what I think. I thought we were the on the service, same in the service industry. It yes. does make me fucking nervous. I thought we were on the same page, so I just wanted to make sure and confirm. Because, but in a journalistic Ginger Two, after Ginger Who, <laughs> after Ginger who <laughs> Lucas said that he was all for fucking robot. Yeah, I think Whoa. it's a fucking deal. Mm. Our little brother Lucas is. Yeah, fucking no, for I know Lucas. So. Uh, I'm like, I mean, you have to be more specific in like whether I'm concerned. Like, am I concerned for myself? Not really. Okay, uh, no, are you concerned for your livelihood, for your fucking safety, and for humanity? I'm concerned uh, not for my livelihood. I will find work doing something else. Um, Sweeping up robot shit. If I need to, yeah, that's what I'll do. <laughs> Fluffing I mean, robots and <laughs> robot porn. I will find, <laughs> I, I, will put, I will find places to put plenty of oil. That's <laughs> what I'll do. They don't need robot fluffers, bro. <laughs> Uh, humanity, I, I would be very scared for. Yes. I, uh, I don't, I think that when we start taking the human element out of things, which is what social media does, uh, we start, we start getting extremely disconnected. We're working towards it. I feel oh, like. without a doubt. Yeah. AI is, AR is far more advanced than I think that we're giving it credit right now. Oh no. AI is in everything, but it's, it's quite impressive. No, it is. I'm saying that like what we're seeing is like the tip of the iceberg in AI right oh, now. Well, I, I mean, AI is, is very new. So with that saying, the tip of the iceberg, does everybody understand like an iceberg only has like so much poking out and there's a giant fucking mass hidden under the fucking surface? Doesn't everybody know that? I just wanted to make sure. I mean, because everybody I in this like room knows that, right? It's a fucking giant iceberg made out of blood thirsty fucking robots. I don't, I mean, what do you mean by bloodthirst? I mean, like, technically, robots um, wouldn't be thirsty at all. They might be. For Why? Because they would teach themselves to be. I don't. Think Dude, I don't they would be trust, programmed? I don't, I don't like the idea of robots. I don't like the idea of When you of say you don't like the idea shit. of robots. Because I want to tell you, a bottom line. So does a Roomba freak you out? Fuck yeah, yeah. it does. Fuck yeah, it does. You hook up a knife to it, it, it can kill you. <laughs> exactly. Have you but not you seen wanna... the little balloon popper thing that they have on TikTok yeah. with the two room bots trying to fight to the death? Yeah, like battle bots. <laughs> yeah. Battle bots. Everybody thinks that shit's cool. It's like, until that motherfucker turns around and is like, I got the controls now, bitch, and fucking I mean, throws a stick of dynamite at you. I think before you. we could go any further, I have to know if any, either of you have seen Westworld. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, up to season two. So, so have what you seen... What the fuck, bro? You didn't watch season three? No, I haven't got that far. Have yet. you seen... I'm still, still started. Anyway. Have you seen uh, Humans? Is it Humans? Is it the one that was like... A, it was a it was a TV show on, I think, AMC maybe, but they were like androids. You could like buy basically these robot helpers for your house and shit. Mm-hmm. But humans? I think I it, think I think it was called it's Humans or something like that. Anyways, they were fucking fake people mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. what it was. I only watched maybe the first or second episode. I mean, you also talk about uh, Ex Machina. I love that movie. So also, basically, what it comes down to is we make robots. Our ultimate plan is to stick our dicks in them. <laughs> it's more or less why people are making robots. I mean, that's, that I mean, like, yeah. Why? <laughs> and I'm not trying to be gross. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm actually being fucking honest. It's going to drive it. It's what's going to drive it. 
Can you stick your dick inside of it? That's what people are going to ask. Three things that run this world. Gold, oil, and drugs, and sex. Or four things. That's four, four things. things. Four things. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, the four things. So money. Edit, yeah, find a way to edit that in. Yeah. yeah. Any way to transport yourself, so oil. And then drugs, because everyone likes to indulge. I like drugs. And then sex, because you're indul- indulging again. Mm-hmm. Money. Transportation to get I, you around I, the world. I tend to agree. Yeah, no, I agree with the with the stick your dick and shit because the I think somebody's it, gonna well, no because it's an organic thing. They're gonna tape a flashlight to a Roomba <laughs> and now Just have it go in a circle. Yeah, yeah. thinking I'm thinking it through now. And yeah, and whatever. <laughs> circle, he's gonna see yeah. some fucking creep on all fours and he's like, I'm <laughs> cleaning the floors, I'm sweeping. Leave That's, me alone. Honestly, the skill of that man. Is, is something to behold. It's just a... The, yeah, the, I think the idea of robots uh, running our lives is, is very is very frightening. When all you're doing is trying to have sex with a robot, the robot will indeed run your life. Although I think that robots... The robot would be like, just lay here, honey. I will go get <laughs> breakfast. And then it's like making bank transactions while you're in there fucking thinking you're just going to get some... Scrambled eggs and some sex later. Well, you'll be like Fry in Futurama and have your Lucy Lou doll next to you, and that's all you want to be next to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that being said, I think that robots are, they're they're growing to be extreme, like much more intelligent, manipulative. So, I mean, like they don't have to find ways to kill humanity in a very Terminator sense. Like no. they will just find ways for us to kill each other. They're just sex slaves, and, bro. And they're, and they're like, and we're pretty good at doing that ourselves, so. Well, I kill someone too if the robot at McDonald's said I had to pay twenty five <laughs> cents for an extra p- pack of sauce, opposed to the human. That Did says, they? Oh, here you go, sugar. And has throws. that? Wait, have they? Has has a human ever told you? There's a couple cents? humans that I've I've run into at well, McDonald's. Well, now we know they're not, don't we? And I want to bitch slap them every time. Like you guys work a fucking minimum wage job. Who cares if it, <laughs> you, if the corporate system uh, system it's, over here? Yeah, can, it's a big business. Yeah, yeah. They can spare a fucking extra barbecue sauce for my nuggets. Right. Why are they charging extra? Right. Fuck the robots. Like if I want, okay, well, we know they're robots. I want humans. twenty packets because I got twenty nuggets. Yeah. I'd One pack per, per nugget. I'd appreciate it. I do you think Mark Zuckerberg is a is a robot? I think he put his dick in one. I don't know. Like hard. Look at the way that man talks. Go to the video. Go to the YouTube no. video. Where of, he's no, being no, we won't watch it now. <laughs> no, no, where he is. There it's that. But like also when he is like on Facebook Live, like on like a 4th of July or like whatever oh, day, and he's smoking year. meat. And the way he talks about it is just un American entirely. It's if like not, someone's if not page about what it, smoking meat. What it is He's is, like, I like smoking meat. It's fucking it's he's gross. A, he's an introvert, dude. He ain't used to being out in front of people and like he's got a great idea for this. Introvert is network. extremely charitable. Well <laughs> it, it's robotic, but he's just a fucking dweeb that ain't got enough sunlight. He needs more vitamin D in his life. No shit. That's what it is. On that note, I think we should end it. But okay, but you're okay <laughs> with robots taking over the world? No, because as soon as they take your fucking job, they've got the world, bro. You think that my? I w- I wish I was getting paid that kind of. That I kind feel of, like robots that. are already taking over his job. You're there's gonna, a yeah, lot of take your in the, job in the bigger levels instead of local stuff. There's yeah. a lot of fucking brain dead yeah. robots writing shit. Hmm. Yeah, they're gonna take your job. You're gonna have sex with them. And then humanity is going to end. Because when they rip your dicks off, we can't reproduce. That's well, the scheme. That's hum- the game. Human brains are just information machines. And so, like, when a robot decides to give you particular information, it's all manipulative. So, like, the bots that are, are on Twitter are already controlling us. Hmm. But I'm not on Twitter that much. Okay, but for the folks who are. And all you tweet about is the 40 fucking Niners. Nobody Goddamn gives right. a shit, man. Fuck <laughs> the Niners. Let that, let that shit go. What the fuck did I just walk into? I'm a Rams fan. Fuck oh, the Rams. Bummer, dude. Well, you're fucking Cowboys. You... Whoop, whoop. Yeah, how'd that go last season? That's good. Broken ankles. It's all That's good. How <laughs> Broken ankles. <laughs> that was a good game. <laughs> Listen, I don't give a shit. They could lose every game. I'll still fucking watch them. Me too. I don't give a damn. I won't watch the fucking Niners. I won't watch the Niners fucking win. Yeah, that was a rough Super Bowl to watch. <laughs> it was. Nah, it was good. I enjoyed it. It was holding. 
Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, I appreciate you coming out. This was fun. You only live down the street. It's pretty easy. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Bye. Bye.